And now, Uninformed with Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. No reading, no research, just strong opinions. Hey, what's going on? Bill Burr, Joe DeRosa. Hi. The February episode of, uh, of Uninformed. We missed January, Joe. What happened? We did. It was a uh, wind down from the holidays. We took some time off. We took some well-deserved time off. I mean, yeah. this is a brutal grind we have doing a show once a month, and you need a break sometimes. Yeah, twelve dozen shows a year, man. <laughs> once in a while, you just need to regroup so you can come up with some yeah. new stuff to talk about. Yeah, you, you know? don't want to just keep rehashing the same thing, you know. That's how I, that's how I do my stand-up, man. I do one show a month, <laughs> and then after 12, 12 shows in a year, I just take a month off. Now, if anybody's... Uh, uh, you know, whatever. Wondering when the hell we were in January. Basically, we forgot to schedule with Danny. And, uh, you know, they have like 40 shows that they're trying to work into four Saturdays every month. Yep. And we missed out. Yep. It's basically they play musical chairs here. Yep. So so anyways, we uh, we are back here. And uh, Joe, I haven't seen you in forever, man. I'm living out in La La Land. I know. How did did you like the Christmas gifts I gave you, Bill? Did you watch them? Because I was terrified that you were never going to watch them. What did you give me again? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Every fucking thing. No, you gave me Copland. Copland was good. And then you got I me. I gave you All in the Family. All in the Family. Did you watch it yet? No, and I got to admit, I'm never going to watch it. Why? <laughs> I, I got I, it. It's like a little, I thought it was like a perfect little thing to get you. No, nah, it's like, dude, you know when you kind of get like a joke gift? You, you yeah. laugh. You know what that's like? That's like wearing like one of those, like a funny t-shirt. And then somebody sees it, and then they laugh, and then you're still wearing the T-shirt, and it's I, like, now what, what? Now what happens? I thought you actually liked the show. I'm actually, I'm I like it, but Joe, I show. also I have TV Land on my basic cable package. Yeah, I keep so, forgetting that other people have cable, and I don't. If you gave me that, I really would watch it. <laughs> Dude, what do you do <laughs> all day? I watch. But, I buy TV seasons and watch them, and then I uh, I work on my <laughs> screenplay. Why don't you just get, just get cable, Joe, and you can watch? All the TV seasons it's, for free, dude. I can't. I can't justify spending another hundred and forty dollars a month on top of all the other bills I have right now. It's just you know, really. Yeah. And you can drop like seventy a night at a bar. I don't drop seventy a night, Bill. You know, maybe maybe once in a while, Bill. I thought you were big, you thought a you're a big uh, big scotch drinker. I am, Bill. You know, I like a little scotch, maybe a cigarette. Uh, a broad on my day on my <laughs> Joe, it's, come on, man. It's, it's fucking cable. It's not that big a deal. That's really pathetic. Uh, it's not pathetic. It's just, you know, I, today this year was a big year for me, jumping up to the to the apartment. My rent, you know, doubled from what I was used to, and I had to start paying phone and all that stuff on my own. So, you know, I'm just a little hesitant with the cable right now. I'm going to get it. Did you ever end up getting a New Year's gig, by the way? Yep. Yeah, yeah last time we did this show, you took a nice hour-long pounding. I did. I got a. I got a great gig actually, and I worked with uh, Louis C.K. in You didn't North get a great Carolina. gig. No, it was. It was great. I'm serious. Where? I worked with Louis C.K. in North Carolina. What was the name of the place? Well, it's Louis C.K. So Charlie heavy. Goodnights. The money was fucking ah, great. It dude, was great. You know how bad I wanted you to just be sitting at home. I know you did. Crying in you your girlfriend's a... arms. She was working. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been alone. <laughs> um, she's she's uh, my girlfriend's in the studio today. Everybody. We've, uh, Dana, we heard you arguing right before the uh, before the big show here. Yep. Yeah. I don't know how to have a girlfriend. I don't know what you're allowed to say, apparently, and like the appropriate things to say. And so that's I, the nicest way of saying I'm a fucking asshole. I, well, I don't know what to do. I, I get. Tell me, do you think this is uh, a shitty thing to say? I was I was telling her that I was working on a bit. About the chicks in New York. About how that's we the reason these... why a, a comedian has a girlfriend, by the way. So you have someone to run material by, <laughs> because you you can't run it, <laughs> you can't run jokes by on another comedian. Yeah. So I just you know I was saying I, I said look I, I thought of this funny premise for a joke about how they have these like really hot girls in New York that are so hot these model chicks. They're, like, so detached. They look like they're sleepwalking. So they almost look like they're sick or something, you know? And as soon as I said that these really hot girls, she was like, yeah, well, and I was like, what, are you Are you mad that I said that I said hot oh, girls? Oh, yeah, yeah. And look. she was like, well, yeah, it's maybe I'm not the best person to try the joke on. And I was like, but, but I go, sweetie, you can't tell me that <laughs> y you think I'm the hottest guy on earth. You don't. If you put me next to Brad Pitt, you could say... Brad Pitt's hotter than you, without question. He's physically he's hotter than you. I don't think you I had to go all the way up to Brad Pitt. <laughs> I really don't. I think you take the average myself... guy at a New York sports club. Well, I, uh, you know, I, uh, I'm just trying to make an example, Bill. That uh, you know, I don't know. I don't think that that's that bad. 
Is that? I don't think that's what kills me with women. Is they act like. Well, do you get pissed if she does that? If she sees like uh, one of these guys on TV and starts taking his shirt off, no, 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 dude, and she just goes, "God damn, dude!" When Jimmy Eat World comes on the TV, I mean, the, it's like a fucking that? slip and slide through the living room. This, this, <laughs> the streams are flowing. You know, I mean, and she that doesn't annoy you. No, I think they stink. But I realize that there are guys on this planet that are that are fucking. By 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 the typical definition of hot, hotter than me. It doesn't mean I doesn't mean I want to date the other girls or she wants to date the other guys. I want to date her, but I, you know, I mean, let's I'm just be saying she's up. not as good looking as no, uh, no. some of these other broads That's, coming down the street. You know what I'm saying? That's not what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like it's it's like come on. Do you no, really I actually, think- I understand it on a certain level because I've had girlfriends look at like guys on like TV and it's, and it's bugged me sometimes. I gotta admit, I mean, I know they're in better shape, but it's just it's like it's, it's, you know what it is, Joe? That there's a there's a lack of respect there. Where it's like I don't want to. I don't. I know you want to ride the guy. I don't need to hear about it. You know, go call your friend. Do you think? But but, but I mean, get, with that being said, so you you clearly think that there are men on this planet that Nia says, well, technically he's more attractive than Billy. But I, but I love Billy. I, and I love and I. I'm very. I think Billy's. If she doesn't say all that, guy. I know. But I'm saying if you if you know. Have you, have you seen like Survivor? And there's that that black dude who's just completely ripped. He digs mm-hmm. graves for a living. This guy is just completely ripped. And he came on the TV screen, and she just, like, squeezed my arm like she was going to pass out. And uh, I almost fucking gave her an elbow. Okay. Well, that I can understand, but that's not what I did. I just what, said... me elbowing my woman? No. Yes. Yes. And tossing her behind the couch and wrapping her up in a blanket. Oh, Jesus Christ. So she uh, All right, don't, comes don't, to... Don't go there. <laughs> the, uh, listen. John, what was the last, said, last time you thought about it? Don't go there. Oh, I'm a fucking loser. What was the last time you thought about just, just winding up and just, you know, just belting a member of the opposite sex? <laughs> Uh, they should have like a special ago. glove where you wouldn't hurt them, so you could still ago. get like the anger out. <laughs> you could still get... like one of those uh, no. silicon things that you put over the Wii controller. So yeah, what are those television. fists that they give like those little five-year-old kids so they can have like a fight? You know what I mean? Those big Hulk yeah. hands. You should be able to do. <laughs> <laughs> Lady, get... I tell you, if you don't shut your face, I'm taking out the Hulk hand. If you get mad at a girl, you should be able to do the American Gladiators thing. You should get to bring her in that fucking arena and go up on those those platforms and hit her with those fucking those fucking oars. Oh, have. the mop the mop <laughs> handle that's got the thing on the other side. Now I'd rather go with the Hulk hand. I don't know. Would you go with the overhand? Right, that's an uppercut right through the cleavage, so they don't see it coming. Because you usually you don't lead with an uppercut. You got to set it up with a jab. This is before we get too far off the side. This is what I'm saying. I yeah, that would annoy me too if if my girlfriend squeezed my arm like, oh my god, I want to fuck that guy so bad, I got to squeeze and bruise your arm right now. That's not what happened though. But if she said to me, hey, did you ever notice these model hot guys that are walking through the city that are like perfect? I'd be like, yeah, they're fucking annoying. That's no, that's, I know what you're saying because you kind because you kind of made fun of them on on, on uh, yeah, you kind of made fun of them. I'm, I'm not fun saying, of them on the like, way, oh, dude. Wanna... Check out those. He, Danny just brought up the picture, man. Check out those. Uh, Check out those big gloved hands. Oh, I would love that. I would I, love I, you that. know what? If I was on the jury and, and, you know, no offense, you belted your girlfriend with one of that, that would just be with one of those gloves. That would just be so funny that I would definitely go for the acquittal. <laughs> well, come on. I know he hit her, but he, he had a sense of humor about it. You can't. No, because because th- th- that's intent. If you, ha- you, you could get away with it was a moment of passion. It was reaction if you just hit somebody. But once you took the time to put those gloves on, that's when they, that's, when <laughs> that's they premeditated. Yeah, he had time to think about his actions. I mean, look, you have to lace them up. He had to he put one of the strings in his mouth. <laughs> you had to inflate it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what? What exactly? How far does that rule go? Like, can you can you throw a dish towel? You can throw a dish towel at your girl. I know you can do that. If you're Bobby Kelly, you can throw a piece of chicken at your girl. Oh, does he do I that? I threw chicken at it, dude. He's got that bit about that. Am I the only one that follows Bobby's act? Yeah, I haven't seen Bobby. I mean, I see him, but I, I haven't seen him do, like, stand-up. I threw some chicken at a dude. What about, uh, get, get, you know, get Patty on. All right. Patty, come up here for a second. This is Joe DeRosa's girl. I just want to see, like, where your line of tolerance is for uh, domestic violence. You know, it's 2008. We yeah, have a lot. Your own mic, sweetheart. There's four other mics. She's coming over we- to share mine. <laughs> No, we have a lot of truck drivers who, uh, you know, they get a little pent up driving across uh, Route 70. Yep. Um, what, let, let, let's let, let's start with like uh, we'll start with some with uh, first of all, you know, in your dating history, have you ever uh, had any guy uh, get get physical with you? No. No. Never. What's what's the closest thing? Did he just go? Why I oughta? 
When he <laughs> choked me, I guess. A guy oh, choked you. Oh, is that you. physical? Yeah. No. No. I've, I don't know. I've never had anybody come close to it. They never threw anything at you? No. All right. Let's see your level of tolerance. Say okay. you and Joe get into an argument. You're in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. There's, there's the sponge. <laughs> it's, it's dry. It's not wet. All right. If it's dry. And he okay. sort of goes to like, you know, throw it down on the floor, but he, he hits you on, on uh, one, one, your big toe. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Now let's say it's wet. You're barefoot. And That's it makes it, right. and it hits you in your calf, and it makes a nice slapping sound. <laughs> Let's replace the sponge with my foot, and I do it on purpose. I just stomp on your foot. Yeah, like I'd that. probably have a problem. You'd probably be upset. You went way that. too, dude. You went way too. You went way too far. Dude. You went from joke. kissing far right, right to the taking one in the face. But it was a fucking joke. Let me preface by saying that I grew up with two brothers, so they got so you have the same level. Okay, what if you took yeah. a tennis ball and just tossed it right at you? Hit you right in your left ass cheek. Really I'd probably stomp. Just throw it back. What if you got a good one here, Joe? This girl's a keeper. Okay. What if I took the sponge and I wa- uh, washed your face like that with it? I was like, yeah, 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 I watch you like that. That'd be bad, right? Yeah, that's called a mush. Is if that a you mush? mush me? So you draw the line at a mush. A mush, yeah, that's right. What, I draw what if line. I gave you a really bad wedgie? That's okay. that would be fun. <laughs> or a swirly if I put your head in the a toilet. Swirly? Put your head in the toilet and flushed it <laughs> like at the beginning of Big Lebowski. <laughs> yeah, that would be the uh, that would be the end. But what if I had a reason? What if you stole money from me? <laughs> and I and gave you, you should... a swirling. Like, Where's the fucking money? <laughs> <laughs> no, not okay. Because probably you should have offered me the money anyway, and it's your fault. Oh, okay. Did did I shed any? You light know what? This the... sucks. You guys just love each other, and you're not oh. you're not going to do anything to each other. No, you know, I thought there was some uh, sort of tension between the two of you. Apparently, you're I wanna... totally made for each other. I really thought I was going to get an argument well, out exa- of this guy. Ex- yeah, what if I get a swirly? I guess that would be okay. <laughs> that's and that's, I really fucking hate the both of you right now. That's why I got upset when I was like telling her I'm like trying to make fun of these chicks with her, and she's just hearing hot girls. I'm like, sweetie, you know I love you. I'm not, I don't want to fuck these other girls. You I'm guys have a gay annoying. heterosexual relationship. <laughs> I look at I, her I, like I, a pal, <laughs> like my buddy. <laughs> oh, pal of mine, you yeah, never just p- p- Patty boy. <laughs> that's, that's all right, all right, Patty. Well, thank you, thank you for coming in. Just let us, letting us know how firm and solid your relationship is. Anytime, Bill. And you, and do you feel a little better about the hot chick thing? Not at all. Thanks. All right, we'll <laughs> fight about it later. Love you, sweetheart. Ah, Bye. she just kissed him on the cheek. You know, this is this is the worst episode <laughs> so far. Just as far, this really makes me feel awful. Anytime emotions come into it, it's never good. You know. But you know, you're no, not, just just the emotion of love. You got a lot of pity in you, dude. You're 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 Mister Fucking Pitiful lately. You have a lot of empathy for people and sympathy. I'm surprised you're having this harsh like reaction what? right now. The fucking I was, dude. I was one trashing Br- Britney Spears. Like I don't give a shit. Like I'm and in the you know, I'm in the I airport. Would... She's on like eight different magazine covers, and they're calling it a tragedy, dude. She's on the cover of Rolling Stone. Like like you know when George Harrison died, he's one of the Beatles. They didn't put him on the cover, okay. Did... And they got this. You know she sang "Oops, I did I did it again." Like you, you didn't re- see this coming. I was actually surprised when you trashed her, because you've been very empathetic lately with things like that. But I I feel I feel really sorry for her, man. I feel they, they got to leave her alone, dude. They're they, what kills me is the media is going. We we can't believe she keeps having these nervous breakdowns that we're causing. Joe, she called them. She created it. I don't I don't believe that anymore. I think it's spun out of control at this point. But she created the shit, dude. What's the last time you saw Steve Buscemi? What's the last time you saw Steve Buscemi in Us magazine drinking a latte? Steve Buscemi's a creepy looking dude and All a right, good actor. Let's, let's, that, that, let's, that's not a fair. Brad Pitt's in Us Weekly constantly. Constantly. That's because he married a psycho who's adopted a baby from every different country out there. He was in there before. They were before. a freak show. He was in there before. I remember seeing Brad Pitt in Us Weekly when he looked like fucking Jesus with the long hair and the beard. What is Brad doing between movies? Like, yeah, you know what he's doing? He's, he's, he's fucking other movie stars. You're asking for it. Dude, this is what I'm saying. There was a media push with Britney by her, her team in the beginning. I don't doubt Why that. Why are you talking through- like you were there? And through her career, because I'm saying I'm agreeing with your claim that, that, that some of this was orchestrated. But I'm saying it got to a point like a year or two ago where it, it wasn't in their hands anymore and it wasn't orchestrated. And it was just the media up her ass, dude, where it's like, dude, it's like Ricky Gervais said at the in the extras uh, in the extras finale when he's like he's like, you know, you, you, you put pictures of Britney Spears's uh, crotch all over the Internet. 
and you're like, can you believe we saw her crotch? It's like, of course you saw it because you literally have cameramen lying in the street as she gets out of the car. Literally, oh, Jesus it's Christ. And there's, there's no responsibility on her side? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying. That became the thing to do. It was flash a twat. Like between May and July, that was the career move of some of you who didn't have an album coming out. If you were just some drunk whore and it's like, God, I, I you know, I don't have time to edit these audio clips. But here's the funny thing is that was my stance when it happened and you disagreed with me. You were like, that's ridiculous. You really think her agents convinced her to do that? And I was like, yeah, I think that was a publicity stunt. And you were like, no, no I don't way. think I don't think her agents did. Did I say that? I don't know. Yeah. Dude, you know what my real point is? I, she's not newsworthy enough to be on fucking eight magazine covers. Who gives a fuck? I totally agree with that. I think you're 100% right. But what I'm saying is when she's getting wheeled into a fucking pl and into a mental hospital on a stretcher, she's not orchestrating that media frenzy around it. It's like, dude, you got to back off. Dude, in L.A., they're reporting where she is every hour. It's dude, crazy. Dude, she flirts with them. She's fucking a member of the paparazzi, dude. She's doing She's doing the whole thing. Well, she's a whack bag, and somebody's – she's a whack bag. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's got to she's you know, dude, they, they, there comes a moral responsibility at some point where you got to go. This girl's fucked up and I can't take advantage of this anymore. And th those people are. Yeah, but this is the thing. You know, well, Joe, do you buy those magazines? You told me you do. I don't buy them all the time. I once in a while I'll buy an Us Weekly in the airport. Well, there and you go, it, Joe. You know, now, look, but it doesn't mean I want to see. Britney you know what? Spears you know what? You know what? I'm, I'm be, you know, I don't want to see you die. Because Maybe then, like cause then you know what's going to happen? Whenever somebody dies before their time, then they got to act like they're like a greater artist than they were. And then we're going to have to watch somebody fucking play like, oops, I did it again on like a French horn at her funeral. <laughs> <laughs> to add some sort of validity. Like, wow, she really, uh, we just really didn't see this coming. Well, that'll happen. She'll die and it'll be the whole, they'll be, what a, what a shame that this poor girl. And it's like, you fuckers help. Oh, and she'll be naked too, Joe. You fuck. She, <laughs> you said that yesterday. That's the, always... Yeah, new bit my head. You know, that was my first thought, uh, Danny, when I heard uh, Heath Ledger's uh, naked body was found in his Soho apartment. My first thought was like, dude, am I the only guy who wears clothes to bed? Am I the only guy who wears like the boxers and T-shirts? Like every time somebody ODs, they're always like completely fucking naked. It's like, yeah, why don't you get some pajamas? Oh, and they were talking about it on the show, how, you know, like, the guy probably just sleeps nude. But every media outlet had to say how nude and naked he was, that his body was found nude. Marilyn Monroe Same was thing. naked. Lenny Bruce. When was the last time you heard, like, the clothed body of Grant Goodeve was found floating <laughs> yeah. face down in a pool? Yeah. and it's always in bed or in a pool. It's never, we found him on the couch. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he came home, he passed, and he never woke up again. Lane, Lane Staley was found today wearing a parka <laughs> and slippers. Yeah, it's never just, you know, it's always in the bed or in the pool. What's with the fucking pool? How yeah, do you die in the pool? I don't understand that. <laughs> No, there's three places you can die. You either die in the bed naked, you die face down in the pool, or you're slumped over in a car and you choked in your own vomit. And then they always say, I was so sad because he died alone. That was the, that was the worst. Obviously, he died alone. He was fucking ODing. What do you think? It was a bunch of people sitting there watching him. Yeah. I like, wow, he's really, uh, look at him foaming at the mouth. I want a normal death. I want a normal death. Well, I want somebody to die like like Dustin Hoffman. Oh, here's a good one, Joe. The, what do you, what do you want? Would you want... To live a full life and not be a memorable comedian or die, you know, right as you just did a great HBO special. And then, every, then everybody can just project of what an amazing yeah. artist you were going to be yeah, rather you, than you were going to dry up when you were 40. <laughs> you, think I don't, you think I don't think of that every other fucking day? Constantly. I'm convinced I'm going to die by 35. I've always felt that. Always. Have you ever had any set on TV where you're just like, if I just blew my brains out right now. Then, then I could get a little bit of that Kurt Cobain love. Well, J uh, Bill, I got to say, a man has a has an inspired feeling as he walks off the stage of the Carson Daly program. And uh, <laughs> many times I thought I could end it at that point. Possibly oh, after my, my God. premium blend set. I don't know if any of my Carson Daly things are on YouTube. Dude, I, 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 last time I did that show, man. I was eating it so bad. The funny thing, Carson was laughing and the band was laughing. Yeah. So in my head, I was having a good set. Dude, I, f I watched it at home, man. I mean, it was crickets. <laughs> and then the best thing was, was I thought I was killing. So I had this big, stupid look of glee on my face. Like, hey, look at me. I'm pissing off the crowd. I'm dangerous. And then, you know, it comes across on TV as I'm not funny. That I hyped band. it on my MySpace, too. Yeah, that band, they laugh at everything. They laugh. 
The last time I was on, I was like, oh, that was great. And then I come off and Carson's taking his mic off. He's, un- you know, he's peeling the tape from his chest. He's like, sorry about that audience today, Joe. Sorry they were so great. I was like, wait a minute. I thought that. Uh, <laughs> Do they really I laugh at I everything? Now I feel like an asshole. The bi- no, they're like comedy. I don't mean they laugh at everything like they're like, um, it came out wrong. What I was trying to say was like, they're like, I think they're like true comedy fans. So they're going right. to laugh at all the shit that, that you should laugh at. You know what I mean? They're a good audience back there. But, the, you know, his crowd, dude, the day I went on, the day I went on, it lit. Did you ever see Mr. Saturday Night, uh, that Billy Crystal movie? Yeah. Where he goes, when his, when his brother, who's his manager, goes, I got you, Sullivan, and you blew it. And you blew it, right? Right. And he goes, well, look who you booked me after. And then it shows him having to follow the Beatles on Sullivan. So he oh, bombs, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the gay. Dude, th- that almost happened to me on Carson Daly. Fiona Apple was in hiding. For two fucking years. Nobody knew where she was. She was depressed. Nobody knew if she was going to kill herself. What was going on, right? She comes out of fucking hiding on Carson Daly to perform on TV <laughs> for the first time and do her song from her new CD. With Sly and the Family Stone. Yeah, dude. They devoted a whole episode to her. And and I was on a different episode. But what they did was they brought the interview for my episode out before Fiona. Then... They did the whole Fiona fuckfest episode, and then I just had to go on after her and do my fucking comedy. And it's just like, Jesus Christ, guys. Like, come on, How man. bad did you eat it? I didn't... Honestly, I didn't eat it as bad as I thought I did. It, it's not that bad. It just starts slow. It starts slow, and then it gets rolling. Then it actually gets good. But, uh, you know, it's like, what position are you putting <laughs> me in right now? Please don't do this to me. Well, we got to get Fiona out of here because, you know... She has to go back into yeah. hiding. She has to take her pill by 3 she's, o'clock. Uh, yeah, she, she can't out. deal. She can only be in the sun from 3 to 4 in the afternoon. <laughs> and uh, when we're dealing with this kind of uh, genius, yeah, you they can't. got you in like a broom closet with like a clown nose on. Yeah. Listen, jackass, we'll get you on when we, when we can. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's get Fiona out here to talk about how depressed she is over her millions. Yeah. Well, by the time this airs, I'll have done uh, Letterman. If I didn't get bumped, I got to do that tomorrow. So I've been running my set. Oh, yeah, this by whole, the way. Uh, this whole weekend. By the way, this is a pre-taped episode. Well, I guess we should have said that at the beginning, right? Well, the fact that we haven't, like, like blatantly tried to get callers, I think they probably figured it out at this point. Our audience is going to turn on us. We, we've, this is, like, the third pre-tape in a row. We're really showing them. We, we don't really don't have shit. an audience, Joe. I think we have a group <laughs> of people. Our truckers. They're, yeah, they're going to sign a five-person petition. You want to say mean things about truckers since they can't call in right now and yell at us? No, we need them at this point, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's been rough, dude. I'm I'm living in L.A. What the fuck am I supposed to do? I come back when I can come back. Bill, you're I, out there. I, I, I do, yeah, I'm out there, dude. You know, there's a writer's strike. There's a whole bunch of auditions that there, you can't go to. And it's just been a great thing for me. Yeah, dude, but you're out in L.A. And, we're not, you know, we're, we're, we're doing it. We're still yeah. doing the show every month. It's not going to stop. So don't, you know, don't. Uh, yeah, Danny, we just have to fret. make sure. That we uh, we schedule our Saturdays here. So yeah, I don't want to miss another month. We'll, we'll try it's the only thing I got in my life right now, man. The freaking writer strike is uh, still still going on out there, Joe. That's all I got. Dude. Yeah, I'm getting I'm just the out there hiking, going to yoga. What a oh, fucking yeah. mistake. My girl's gonna dump me tonight because I said some chick was hot. You know, my stand up is. Uh... You know, I don't know. This is all I got. Oh, no, come on, man. You're doing great. I know. All right, come on. We're, we're going to have an joking. upbeat episode. We're going to have an upbeat episode. This is the Uninformed Show with Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. And speaking of other up, up uh, positive people, upbeat people. That's yes. what I'm trying to say. Uh, uppity, a, uppity, uppity. Yeah, there you go. Here's a nice voice message from a good friend of mine, Robert Kelly, who was in a, in a nice mood. Wanted to sing me a song. It's Uninformed with Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. All right, what's up? What are you Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. I'm just, your relationship is really just disgusting me. We're just sitting here during break and you guys, you're just so happy. Yeah. You're just sitting here relaxed. You got your awful foot just up on the table, and it's just, <clears throat> I just, I don't know. Can felt... you guys, can you just, well, wait, can you guys I... have your little uh, John Lennon, Yoko Ono 
You guys should be like naked spooning right now. I felt. Let me just say this real quick, though. I felt bad earlier. I, you know, I get I get nervous a little bit when we when we make the jokes about like what you, what could you hit your girl with like. I was kidding. We're joking about that shit. Yeah, people like, not joke. It's, it's a comedy show. I know. You know, I just, no, you know what is your girl's here. You love your girl, and now you, you, you try. Yeah. You try not to be the angry half Egyptian that you are. <clears throat> so why don't you guys do your awful? This is just, just do your just awful, do, disgusting, gooey goodbye, so we can get on with the show and actually have some sort of edge to this show. <laughs> she's she's holding leave. her hand. She's got to leave and go back to Queens. Mm -hmm. So you're you're gonna. <laughs> oh God, beat you're it. Gonna, you're gonna. Uh, you gonna stay home and watch the Grammys tonight? Yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> I, I would but tomorrow night. I don't know Tuesday if I can hang night. out tomorrow night. Danny, look at I, him gazing into each other's <laughs> eyes. I would really. I I I want you. I hope you can come back in tonight. I, I don't know if it's too much, but uh, I'd like for you to come back in. Well, I'll give you a call after the Grammys. If you can, because I'd hate to not see you till Tuesday. Oh, she's touching his face. And we didn't really get to hang out much last yeah, it's night. True. It was late. It's true. You know, maybe mid Grammys. You'll get tired of them midway through, won't All you? All right. Well, I'll give you a call. All right. All right. Oh, no. uh, <laughs> I love you. Oh, God. Leave. I love you, sweetheart. Text me and let me know you got home. Gross. Okay. It's actually disgusting. I promise, all right? Bye. Do you hear all the lack of oxygen that's going through his voice box when he talks to her? Hey, yeah. Yeah, we're going to watch the Grammys. Well, what do you want I me mean, to yell at her? I really wish. How long have you been dating? Like three weeks? No, like <laughs> fucking seven or eight months. <laughs> Were you terminally ill and she nursed you back to health? <laughs> so that was really gross. What do you mean it was gross? Oh, her just touching. Like, you know what, dude? Like, right now, yeah, that, the sound you got in your voice, you sound like you again. Like, you're just in the, uh, I hate other crap, you say. Gee, uh, it's called being gentle with I, a lady, I, I, Bill. I hope, I hope Garth Brooks wins. I really like that. I was being he, sweet with my girl. I really like the album he came out with. I can't wait to hear what these fucking... Animals have to say about this. <laughs> All the shit on the no, fucking Joe, you just I don't know. You know, you were just, you were a little too fucking, uh, I don't know. Like, I felt like you should have had, like, scented candles, like, lit around your microphone love, during, love... during that first 20 minutes. Then we're sitting there, obviously, making fun of, like, hitting women. That's obviously a joke. We don't advocate it. Then we right. come out of the break, and you're like, oh, you know, dude, I just want people to know that I don't really feel that way about, uh... Well, dude, we get people calling up the show saying outrageous shit. And, you know, you got to just be careful sometimes. Joe, you, you know, if our audience is promote. a bunch of psychos, that's where we have to start with. We have to feed the beast <laughs> and gradually maybe, uh, I don't know, tame them a little bit. I think Nerf ought to come up with a big fist <laughs> and you can just fucking blast your girl right that's in the head. That's what it should be called, too. The big fist. Something like that. If, you know what I'm saying? That's the thing. If, if a toy company made it, I think you could get away with it. Like from Whammo. You know what I mean? <laughs> if they gave you two big spongy feet. Whammo? And, yeah, and you could do like, yeah, the guys who used to make Frisbees. And you could do like a double like drop kick. <laughs> That's what you should make like, uh, like right around the peripheral of like your kitchen. Most kitchens are square. You should have like, like a wrestling ring. <laughs> so you could throw her against the rope and give her like a Nerf like clothesline. That'd be good if every room in the house had padded walls. Yeah, like those could... AMF, those ain't like bean bags and stuff. Yeah. You yeah, just right. throw her across the room. I'd be into that. I'd be into no, that. No, you, ju you just have the, uh, yeah, this is a silly beatdown room. You put on those big suits. <laughs> no, she wears, no, she wears one of the, yeah, those big sumo wrestler suits, and you come up like Mike Tyson working the heavy regular. bag. You can hit a regular because yeah. he's got that suit on. All right. Like Tyson in 86, just throwing those liver shots. That's fair. That's fair. Do you know how many marriages would stay together if these fucking broads would just go out? <laughs> And just buy the buy a fat suit, couple shots to the chin, to the jaw, right? No, Joe, I gotta tell you something, man. I'm hanging on by, I'm, I'm white knuckling it my way through this, this, this just trying to, to uh, make a relationship work, dude. Like I, I, I realize this about myself, dude. I am fucking great when things are bad. Okay, if 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 my girl's down or something like that, I can build her up and that type of thing. But when it's good and we're just sitting there like watching a movie. And she's like, this great. Just, uh, I just have the urge to like put her in a headlock or like twist her shoe off and throw it across. I, I have Christ, to like, Bill. I have to ruin that moment. Are you ever worried that she'll hear this? That's huh? what I'm. That's what I'm always amazed about. That you'll talk that freely about that. Aren't you scared she would? hear You know this? why, Joe? Because when I got in a relationship, I didn't put my balls in a little box. I didn't put with, mine with in a little box ribbon either. Around. Trust me, I'm not. I'm not a pussy. I'm just saying, like, I, but I mean, w w wouldn't you be nervous that she would hear you say that and you'd be like? 
Now you got to explain. No, I'm being, like, I'm being, I'm being honest. Would you say that to her? I've had that discussion with her. She goes, "Why do you always have to ruin everything?" Oh, okay. And I'm, and I'm like, I don't know. I'm honestly trying to, uh, dude. Obviously, I'm hamming this shit up. Like, you know what I mean? Right. Like, I, I don't want to, dude. I don't want to be that creepy guy hanging out in a bar in like fucking ten years. <laughs> you know, dude. No, that's you know what? Where my the- white shoes match my belt. One of the reasons we're, I was being, you know, that we're like kind of mushy today is because we, we got into a huge fight the other night that was like, you know. What was it about? Give me some dirt, Joe, for the love of God. We just, this is pre recorded. We don't have callers. We, we just, we got into one of those fights where it was like, you know, what are we going to do? Are we going to keep, we going to keep dating or what are we going to do? And it was like, you know, it was, you know, those moments in the relationship where you're like, you have such a bad fight and like you're, you're, you like almost break up over it. But then you're like, okay, there's two things we can do right now. We're either going to break up or if we stay together, it's going to be like, we're starting a little fresh and it's going to be, you know, you know, we like re, re, the you know, sort of like jump starting the yeah. whole thing again. It was one of those fights, dude. It was bad. It was, it was, yeah. And then that during that whole phony nice period as you're kissing her, you're thinking, ah, I should have just ended it. <laughs> I should have ended it. I would have been out. I would have cried for a week. It would have been over. That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, like when you're about to quit your job and they go, look, we'll give you an extra five You know, that's what I would love. I would love to ask somebody, like, who's, like, happily married. Like, how many, even though you're happily married, how many times do you go back to that moment when you first met her and you actually every once in a while just think, what if I just kept walking and I I didn't say hello? Uh, I'm not saying you really want to do that, but every once in a while, dude... I swear to it, it's fucking. Well, how could you not wonder things like that? Which, which again, bringing us back to what we were talking about at the top of the show. If you think it, if if you and your girl both think it and both recognize that it's a that it's something that goes to your head, what's the harm in saying it, dude? You know what my girl does Why every play once these in a while. Games that you don't that, it, that neither of you are thinking it. Just I know my girl. There. I know my my girl does the same fucking thing. She'll get this look in her eyes sometimes. You ever catch them when they look like they're looking 300 miles away? That's what they're thinking about. They're thinking about that moment when they met you going, what if I just didn't go to the bar that night? Yep. I wonder if I would have run into a better guy. What would have happened? Or not even a better guy, but just what if I what if I didn't uh, end up going out with this person? What would I be doing right now? I think that's a perfectly benign discussion to have with somebody. That too no, that's a, that's a, that's, I mean, that's a, that's a good conversation between you and me. That's a dangerous conversation. I don't get why. To I don't have understand to, why. Beca- because you're with the person. Ultimately, you're with that person. You you, you want to be with them. You love them. You're with them. So that's not the case. It's so okay, true. I wouldn't say it's it's dangerous, but yeah, it'll, it'll, it has the potential of leading to... Uh, so, uh, what are we doing? You ever well, have that? Well, <laughs> No, I'm not. Well, I'm not far enough in. I mean, Patty and I have only been like going out, like exclusively. Don't, don't ever do air quotes again, Joe. Exclusively, nobody knows because Joe, do you play piano? See. Maybe no, that's should, your instrument. Though. I should. You really do. You have big, long, effeminate hands. Piano playing fingers, dude. Elton John has little stubby, rich Voss fingers, and he's a ton of hits. Yeah, I always thought I should wear a bow tie. And you a got vest. a little. You got a little John Tesh <laughs> in you. <laughs> <laughs> At a bar, I always thought it'd be a great job. Play the piano at a bar. They don't do. Oh that my god, dude! Remember that thing I was telling you about? I saw. I was in Addison, Texas, at the Improv, and right across the uh, the right across the way over there, they have uh, this bar. They have a piano bar. They have dueling pianos. Okay, and they literally had these people. And it was so funny. They would play like contemporary music, I guess you know music of this time, and then they would tie it in to music from like the eighties, all at the same time. What the uh, fuck dude, song were they were singing? That's awesome. Uh, Oh, they were on the piano. They're literally going, try to make me go to rehab. But I said, no, uh, no, no, we ain't going to take it. <laughs> and they would literally go right into it. And, dude, they thought they were this shit. Like they were getting out, out of the piano seat like they were fucking uh, like Jerry Lee Lewis. Jerry Lee Lewis or one of those bad Billy Joel concerts. Did, uh, did, was the place going crazy? Not really. But they were going fucking bananas. Because I saw guys like that in, uh, where was I? Tempe, Arizona, uh-huh. and these guys were fucking killing, dude. And it was like college, hot college chicks through the whole bar. And it was a dueling piano thing? Dude, these guys out, the, these girls, I went with these girls from my show uh-huh. to the piano bar. Like, I was like, I was, I was left, my, I left the show, 
and I was walking down lonely, fucking just pathetic. Oh, dude, the places you guy. end up in the road. Yeah, you know, when, oh. you're, when you're just single, you got nobody to go back and call. And I'm just walking down the street by myself, and a pack of chicks sees me and freaks out. We were at your show. Oh my god, you gotta hang out. With-. I'm like, I'm totally getting laid. And we go to this. <laughs> <laughs> we go to this. All right, who's getting it? Yeah, which one of you wants it first? <laughs> we go to this piano bar, and these guys. They just trumped me, dude. These girls were fucking putting in requests like they were going crazy for these. Oh, guys. you were the, you were the big time entertainer. Not, not yeah. Until we went to this. And then place. you went to a piano, but you lost it. Wow. And Did they, you have but, a bad set? No, but no, I had a great set. That's why they were freaking out. I fucking killed. But they, but this bar, it was a, it was a young kind of hot guy playing piano, and the other piano person was a chick. Like oh, it was kind of hot, and they were like, and I was like, mother. Fuck, dude. Music will always win. It always wins. Always. I went on a uh, vacation to Austin, Texas this past summer. And uh, Austin. To do what? A friend of mine has a place down there. So oh, okay. Yeah, it was just an easy, it was just, it was an easy <laughs> vacation, you know? Austin's oh, a fun so town, though. It was really fun. And we went down to uh, whatever, the, I forget, I think it's 8th Street or whatever. It's like it's just a big strip of bars. And we went to this piano bar and there was this fucking guy who was playing the piano and he was like, you know, he probably was like early 30s when he started to go like salt and pepper. Uh-huh. This guy had, he was surrounded by vagina. Surrounded. Yeah. And, I w- and he had a ton of fucking, the whole place was going crazy in the first place. Then he had a ton of requests sitting on top of the piano. And I went, I started to go through them. I was hammered because I wanted right. to see what was coming up. And I opened this one sheet and it just says, I want to be your groupie with a phone number in it. And it oh just it made me want to, pu- actually, I did end up punching things that night. I was so pissed off. <laughs> did but- you get all belligerent? Well, let's play Metallica, you <laughs> fag. <laughs> no, I didn't. But uh, I, I, I think I, sh- I told the story on it. I struck out with like five different chicks, and on the way out, I punched a light post as hard as I could, and my oh, god, my hand was swollen for about <laughs> uh, <hilarious>. three months. <laughs> Why does that always hilarious. see right there? That's when you need the Nerf fist. Jesus, I don't Christ. know who I would have hit that night, though, dude. You could, so you could have, you could have bought the full thing, the padded feet. And both fists, and you could have just, you could have basically done a fucking massacre in there and not hurt anybody. I was just so, infi- like, I was trying so hard. Well, that's- so hard. And all this fucking guy had to do was just play some shitty piano songs, and he had women just fucking throwing their vaginas at you him. You know would have been the greatest move ever. You would uh, definitely would have gone to jail if you could somehow clear a path through all those girls. If you could just get a full head of steam, <laughs> and right as that guy had his eyes closed hitting that note, and you just hit him like, like Harry Carson. <laughs> Oh, that'd be great. Just drill him right in his back, right <laughs> off that chair. That'd be great, just as he's, yeah, as he's taking it all in. He's making that face like he's the rock. <laughs> you hit him right in the back of his shiny vest. <laughs> <sighs> made me so mad. He was good. Like was he was he a good, good looking. looking. Yeah, he was. Well, that, that's, that's that's what made it even more infuriating. Was that as a man, I could admit that this guy, he was actually a real good looking guy too. It just made it so and much you, worse. Did you have to go to a dive bar? Ugh. There was some girl singing in that yeah, one. On top of it, you were probably coming off like a creep. No, I wasn't, man. I really <laughs> wasn't. You're wearing your Jägermeister t-shirt. <laughs> you know, I've made a point to not wear that shirt. You know, dude, you really have show. some of the worst. I don't think I've ever seen you wear <laughs> a t-shirt. You. That, dude, you, you <laughs> what is it today? <laughs> because fucking Led Zeppelin. fucking monitors, I can't see His him. t-shirts Put are all right like... Here. Let Do you go to a it. carnival every weekend and, and win some game? <laughs> Patrice just brought that up the last time I did his show. He was you had to mention how fucking terrible my t-shirts are. Let me see it today. Walk around the. Th- I can't see because of mom. He has the Led Zeppelin II oh. album cover. <laughs> it's hideous. And they're always black T-shirts that are turning a little white because he washed them too many times. And the, all the T-shirts I had when I was like 16, and I wanted to rebel against my parents, <laughs> and I didn't know how to talk to chicks. So I, Danny, maybe if I put on this T-shirt, this will break the Danny ice. He gets all his shirts from a kiosk in the mall. You know he does. <laughs> <laughs> no, He's actually, walking out of him. a Cinnabon. Going, I'm oh, telling you, it's that. carnival and hot topic. <laughs> <laughs> some, well, some of it is actually hot topic. It's mostly actually it's mostly eBay and specialty websites, and uh, all, all the T-shirts that Opie uh, decides that he doesn't want to wear. Why, why don't you? Do, why don't you just come? You, it's like so hacky. Jaeger, Led Zeppelin. Shirt. Look, I know they're terrible shirts, but and I the mean, hats too. He's always wearing some hacky fucking what? ball cap. Well, yeah. yeah. No, t- it's usually not the new. What is that? The Mets. You know what he's doing? He's right, making. He's Mets. making this look like we're on pirate radio, <laughs> like we're in a basement. You should be here cool. talk, yeah. talking about if, politics. If, if I, Danny's I, dressed like he's doing pump up the volume. I'm coming in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming in. I'm coming in to pre to record the show. Who do I have to impress that I got to wear something better than a well, Led Zeppelin t-shirt? It goes back hat. to the Heath Ledger thing. If you're gonna OD, have the decency to wear some clothes. <laughs> 
If you're going to be alive and you're going to produce a fucking show, you know, every once in a while. Yeah, I'm going to start coming in how Patrice dresses now. Don't like, do that. Like, oh. like, like he's an extra from Harlem Nights. Yeah. That's how I'm going to start coming in here. Oh, now. man, he took a pound in last night at the cellar. He's wearing a dead derby <laughs> with the feather in it. Oh, hey, Bobby, Kelly, sh- Bobby Kelly said he looked like he had a barbecue sauce coming out. <laughs> I thought he looked like uh, he looked like he works for Halliburton. No, he, <laughs> Jesus Christ! I, oh, it was it was all. I got to give him respect though. He had the balls to walk in. Yeah, and, he looks like he's gonna take a coin out of his pocket and start flipping it with his fucking. Oh phone. yeah, like he should have the big <laughs> or the watch. Yeah, the big watch. Yeah, he had like half a zoot suit. And then those yeah. awful, the, the original fucking Air Jordans. Yeah, he's going to walk across the street doing the fucking the uh, shorty thing from Malcolm X. I don't hey, know. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. All right. Where, where are we at here? Yeah. We're, we're, you know where we're at? We're trashing people who aren't here right now who wore outfits <laughs> that our listeners didn't see. And that's why it ended the way it did. That's exactly the way that should have ended, where you just started shuffling papers going, okay, where, where are we at here? All right. Hack-a-dog-a. Let's Let's keep this thing rolling along. Anyways, for those of you actually who are just tuning in, I always do this show like people listen to it from wire to wire. Uh, this is the Uninformed Show with Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. Uh, we're going to be talking about alcoholism and uh, actually the, 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 the brighter sides of alcohol. Like, you know, yeah. and we're going to have uh, David Tell supposed to be calling in. And uh, we're going to have Julian McCullough. Thank God you said that. I don't even know I his knew last I could name. Tell. I, I'm with you, dude. I knew you. Dude, I knew when you got a boy. first name like Julian, I, I don't need to know your last fucking name. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, I hear hey, you. Julian's coming. Yeah, I hear you. Hello, Julian uh, Smith. Uh, yeah. fucking... Isn't Julian Smith a famous person? Uh, no, I don't think so. Is he like a singer in a band? Julian, Julian Lennon. Lennon. Jinx. Julian Lennon. Which is, yeah, exactly. And your little. Uh, Yoko Ono. I'm so fucking hungry right now. My stomach is doing somersaults. Joe, what's going on with you, man? I noticed uh, you're a little more out of shape than you usually are. Really? I, yeah. I gained weight, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, as a Wait, friend, Joe. Honestly, you think I gained friend? People keep telling me I lost weight still. Uh, they're not your true friends, Joe. You're, you're really starting to get, uh, I don't know. You're starting to get that, that, that pelican, the pelican brief thing going on underneath, <laughs> <laughs> underneath your jaw. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm that close to somebody feed me fish out of a fucking Joe, bucket. you know, if you would just work out, this fucking guy eats the worst I've ever seen a human being eat, and he doesn't work out at all, and you're still sort of remotely sort of, you Same. can see that you're supposed to be a skinny guy. I don't know, dude. I got to start, man. You know, you got that long head. <laughs> I got to start. I'm, I'm, I'm upset, though, because somebody else told me, they were like, you look like you gained some weight, dude. You got to, like, I noticed it. You got to. Oh, you know what Patrice said last to me in my head? He said, I look like I'm in mask. But the, the mask or mask? <laughs> the mask. All right. Those Which are is two even very funnier. Things, yeah. No, that was even. <laughs> I was literally on stage on the cellar, and when you're at the olive tree, they, they got a camera where you can see your set, and everybody was there last night. And I'm literally trying to do my set as far to the right of the stage as possible so I won't be on the camera upstairs because I it literally in my set, they're not even in the room and I'm hearing them trashing me yeah, and my yeah. shirt, my stupid head. That is funny brutal. though. You do got a little bit of a skeletory fucking vibe to I you do. once you shaved your head. Yeah, I got a nice big round head. It do- <laughs> At least it's not flat in the back like Bobby's. Bobby has like that, just that pushed is it flat? in. Yeah, He's it got is. those rolls in the back, doesn't he? No, he doesn't have the rolls. His head is like that. I told I told him it was from all those years laying on his back watching TV. He just sort of filed down that back sort of round part. Dude, I've actually I've actually uh, for everybody out there too. Bobby's another guy who always is. Uh, he's always on like a diet or some shit, dude. I I got the perfect fucking diet, man. What? This is basically what you do. You get up in the morning, like around whatever whatever time you get up, and you basically you eat perfectly until seven, and then you don't eat anymore. For the rest of the night, and uh, you will lose weight. <laughs> Gee, Bill, that's a real uh, inventive diet you've Dude, come up with. I've because never all heard the, of that one those before. other ones are all stupid. That's Dude, a, that's Dude, I'm eating, diet. I'm eating nothing but fucking uh, pig ears. You eat pig ears for the first fucking four days. All that shit, it doesn't work. I got, dude. I got to start working out, dude. It's just here's the thing, it's, Joe. You're not. I can tell you right now, you don't have the. You don't. You just don't have it in you. It's hard to eat right. I like I like I like fast food. I really like it. It's Dan, hard. you got any money on you right now? Uh, actually, no. You got you got like twenty bucks or something. You, you, I just want to. How many how many push ups do you think Joe could do? Twelve. You think oh, no, he could, could do twelve? Do... Like, good. Shut up. Don't I'll, handicap I'll it. it. I'll, I'll I'll get it. Twelve. I want real ones, dude. We're talking all the way down to the floor, back straight. What what the what do I get in, huh? out of this? Humiliated, and it's going to be <laughs> fucking entertaining. 
I'm just wondering, you know what we're going to do? No, no, this is what you do. We're going to get you in shape, Joe. When you have like a personal trainer, this is what they do. They, they try to see where you're at physically. So we're going to see where you're at physically by right. starting off with some push-ups. What do you say, 12? Yeah, I'll go, you, you, I'll, I'll go 12. You want to do it like the price is right, closest without going over? All right, we can do that. I say, Joe, oh, man, 12, that's a great fucking number. Because I really can't see him doing 15, and I think he can do 10. I'm not going to be a cunt and pick 11. <laughs> I'm really not. Uh, be a cunt. I say Joe. I say Joe has. Ugh. I want to actually believe in you and say you got 16 in you. 16? Yeah. Oh, that's not a good sound. That's good. All right. All right what do you say? Oh, 20 bucks? Say. Sure. 20 bucks. And you know what? For some reason, I, the fact that you don't have money, I don't think it's going gonna, it's gonna to matter at the end of this. All right. There's Joe. Hey, let's I'll talk about Joe's t shirt. <laughs> Joe's got a <laughs> University of <laughs> Arizona, a period red. Where'd you get that, Joe? God knows you don't have a college agent, so I know you weren't over there. Down on the ground, and there's literally stains on the floor from God knows what. The Opie and Anthony show is a respectable show. I'm sure nothing happened. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is my reminding me. This is like the beginning of Strike. He, <laughs> yeah, he just looked he like just, he was doing the, the worm. worm. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get a sandwich or something. All right, there we go. Joe. Oh, is there's one. A push up? Oh, my God. This is the worst. It's not a push up. Those aren't push ups. It is. It is too. Push up. You, you, no, no, no. you can't stop, dude. You got to keep going. Wait, well, hang on. Joe that was not. That Joe, was not, okay, wait a second. Wait a second. That, that was the warm. That was a warm up. Okay, that was the warm up, Joe. This is what you got to know, Joe. We are going to be making fun of you the entire time you're doing this. <laughs> All right, but that's so a, I'm saying, don't they don't don't. I'm saying, do we agree that that's a fucking push up? No. He was. He went. I, you know what? This is what. This is how it works. Every three he does counts as two and a half. Oh fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, you got to go down. You ha your, your chest has to pretty much touch the floor. You're going down like three inches and lifting yourself back Yo, up. Watch Batman Begins when he does the push-ups. He, he doesn't even go as far down as me. Watch anybody do push-ups. It's a it's movie. Not going down. It's about working these fucking Dude, look at, look at his arms. <laughs> his arms. <laughs> you ever see like... You know what Joe's body looks like at this point? You ever see like when a little kid wears like one of those puffy vests? <laughs> 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 Did I just win? <laughs> he just did three. I think I won. And he was so out of shape, he just started laughing. <laughs> I can't even do it with a straight I face. won. Oh, my God. <laughs> he did three half no, push-ups. the closest without going over. We both lost. He did three. No, he won. I won. 12. I picked 12. 12 you picked 15. Three. three is closest to 12. No, I thought it was the closest without going over. He went over. You, you, even if we count oh, your first yeah. one, oh, you only did seven. Saying. Dude, I'll give, I'll give you the 20 just because that I'll was worth there. it. Don't worry about it. Jesus Christ. What else can we physically can we have Joe do? You think you can do more than that? Why don't we have video? You can't do three every five minutes, though. Oh, he's belching over there? <laughs> wow. Listen, I'm... Get, get on the microphone so we can, uh, let, let, let's show. Wow. That has to, how do you feel right now? Uh, not good. I, I don't <laughs> like doing that at all. I did not enjoy even the three push-ups was, it just sucks. <laughs> I hate doing stuff like that. <laughs> his, his head was just hanging down. Like he didn't have any, he didn't have any neck muscles. He was just, he was, <laughs> and just the way that you had to, you had to. He was, he was looking at his dick the entire time he was doing them. <laughs> Yeah, wow. yeah, you know, it's it's just uh, I'm not one of those physical guys. Wow. Yeah, neither am I. I could do more than three push-ups, though. What yeah, do I mean, you, you think? Could, you could probably play, like, re re like relatively play some sort of sport and be like, pull it off. You know what I mean? Like, I can't, dude. I, 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 I suck at stuff like that. I'm terrible. Dude, I'm not Joe, you know what? I, I literally suck so bad at basketball, so bad that, like, when I, when I do, like, a pickup game, guys would let me shoot. You know, like I mean, in the I don't, game, I don't they wouldn't sports, block though. me or anything. It but, it's but, not about sports, But I was though. always the guy where I'd be like, I don't want to play, I suck. And they'd be like, we all suck, dude. But then I'd play and they'd be like, dude, you really suck. <laughs> like, like, we won't well, even block your shots. <laughs> I, was <just> picturing, <laughs> like, I was just picturing Joe playing, playing hoop. And for some reason, I just pictured you dress like how you dress when you're working a nice club. Like he'd be wearing his sport coat <laughs> with, with his V-neck over a dress yeah. shirt, just yeah. flailing around. Ah, right, Joe, that's a double dribble. <laughs> I can't do that. I, I thought I could do that. Ah, uh, shit. All right, we we gotta. Dave's calling. We gotta call Dave at three o'clock. We gotta call Dave at three. Oh, Jesus Christ, Joe! Can you just like sit down? I'm afraid you're gonna pass out. I Joe, you know, early in this show, I think you really had a premonition when you said you were gonna die at 35. <laughs> yeah, he this meant at the 35th push-up. Yeah, he's gonna die. <laughs> Dude, I, I've always felt that. Aren't way. you like maybe like you know you know what all the guys who like weren't really good at sports. Not saying I was like an athlete or anything like that, but like. 
then weren't you just like good at like cross country? Isn't that what you guys did? You know, after you were done actually being a math Believe it or not, I wasn't that bad at track when I was younger. That's what every kid who sucks at push ups and can't catch a ball. You guys all just, you know, you were just good at running for a long time. It was all, it was all that practice of getting chased by bullies. Yeah. Like first grade through like seventh the grade. The problem is I look like a goddamn fucking retard when I run. So it's, you know, that's out. Oh, that's what do you half have? the reason why I don't want to go to the gym is because like, I don't want to run on that treadmill. I look like a goddamn goofball. You don't have to. You can what do happens? The, uh, I just look like an, look at me. I look like a big, tall goofball when I run. I look ridiculous. Do, 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 you, do you like, do your legs like... Flay, you remember that Elton John when he did that dumb dance like uh, I'm still standing, and he started to kick his legs out to the side. You want to look? You ever see those people when they run? It's like below their knees. It's doing like this windmill <laughs> Dude, action. Let's put it this way: I've never ever in my life run where people haven't laughed at me or made fun of it. Wow! Nobody's ever been like. Did you have like those metal leg braces <laughs> when you were a kid? I should have probably. I got that fucking. Joint laxity thing, and that's why my suck at sports. And stuff. What is what is joint laxity? It's like some condition where like your joints are really not like weak, where they're debilitating or anything, but they're just your joints are significantly weaker than the average person, and it and it basically leads to you not being very athletic because it it fucks with your coordination. You know what I mean? Wow. It makes it basically makes me. That's why I'm clumsy. Is because like if you if, like if I trip over something, you should be dead right now, Joe. You know, like like the weak of every species. That's the problem with the population. But I'm the brain. With, with the population problem. See. Oh, yeah, the brain does. The brain. The brain does save it. Yeah. You know, that you poor the, thing imprisoned in that awful workers, body. You have the workers, you have the soldiers, and you have the leaders. And what are you, Joe? I'm a leader, Bill. Oh, is this going to be another contest? <laughs> I was a leader in high school. I was. I was in the leader group. <laughs> Jesus, no. Joe. No. All right. Let's, uh, we got to. Joe, I don't want you to die, man. What can, what can I do to keep, I mean. Who the fuck am I going to talk to during this show? I really think I can fit the half-clothed body of Joe DeRosa was discovered on an L-shaped couch today. He'll be fully clothed. <laughs> Still wearing his jacket. He was yeah, you know what, Joe? You're going to die alone with like half a bacon, egg, and cheese croissant just sitting in your yeah, lap. Dude, dude, I got I to got, I got stop. A little I bit have, of scrambled egg in your pubes. I have to get in shape. <laughs> I have to get in shape. Uh, I have to. I'm just, I just hate, I hate exercise so. Joe, I'm not gonna lie to you, dude. The reason, much. the reason why I started getting back in shape, dude. I, you know, being out in L.A., like, like you're in a car now and you got that fast food shit, and dude, they have the best goddamn burgers. I'll eat you know, that fat burger in and out. L.A.'s burgers and fast food are insane. So like, it's all new to me. Jack in the box. They always have a new sandwich every month. Like, oh, I'm going to try that, dude. I ended up getting up to like, I'm, my, I'm supposed to be about a buck seventy. I was up to like 185. What's <laughs> Keith called me Red Johnny. I don't even remember that. Red Johnny, the round yeah, guy, yeah. he was this big fucking redheaded dude. And, uh, dude, the last thing I want to be is a fat redhead, man. That's like, <laughs> that's just uncastable. I might as well just start a writing career at that point. There's been a couple of fat redheads, hasn't there? Philip Seymour Hoffman. But he's just such an amazing actor. Yeah, like I've I've surrendered and and hoped that I could become the guy in that category, where you just oh go, that, that's what you have to do. If you're a fucking yeah. mess, you just have to be a mess in this business. Like you, that's why I don't understand plastic surgery. Like when ugly people get like plastic surgery, it's no. like God. I'm just coming off so fucking mean right now. No, no, no. But I'm saying that's that I I want to slide into that category where like he's not. You know what you want to do? You want to be the guy who's brave. He's so brave. He just took his shirt off in that scene. He didn't do any setups. Did you ever see Will Farrell's body? It's a train wreck, but it's hilarious. Oh, you know what it is? That, 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 that dent, right? He's got right that up. scar. That's a. I forget what the operation is, but yeah, he, he had his, like his pancreas removed or something. Some shit. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Well, all right. Well, so thanks for listening to uh, Uninformed here. Joe DeRosa may, might die before the next episode. Now we go into alcoholism. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the up, next coming. Uh, the upcoming hour. God, dude, we really have to make these breaks a little smoother. They're smooth. They're really on. smooth? Go ahead. What, because you just said it was smooth? All right, you're listening to Uninformed. <laughs> Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. Joe, three push-ups DeRosa. Uh, we're going uh, to be talking about alcoholism, and uh, we're not going to be, like, preaching about it, you know, because everybody's already done that shit. So we're going to, uh, I don't know, me and Joe, we both like to drink, so we think there's some upside to it. So uh, this is the longest going to break fucking thing ever. Keep it here. <laughs> Uninformed with Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa.
All right. We're back here. Man, listen, that sounds good, man. I got to get that. Joe's been telling me that. All, all the music today has been from uh, ACDC's uh, Ball Breaker album. Joe was telling me. I like that. He was saying it was. Uh, it's a great album. It was a very uh, underrated album. It is. It's weird. It, it had like two singles that charted the song Hard as a Rock and Hail Caesar. Hail Caesar. Was, like, is this the album with that? Like a dog! No, that's Stiff Upper Lip. Stiff Upper Lip. Oh, okay. But those two songs charted it did okay but this is the album that rick rubin produced and phil rudd this was phil rudd's first album back with them like after Dude, they just have the best guitar sound yeah ever and he made this album sound it was a really warm sound he, you know it was like a back to the roots thing. Hey, you know what joe really you good. convinced me yeah dude I, i'm gonna ch i'm gonna check that one out yeah you'll you'll, you'll love that album i know you will all right, well, uh, we're listening to Uninformed with uh, Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. Um, uh, today's episode, we're going to be talking about uh, alcoholism. And this kind of came out of the fact that me and Joe, we were on the phone, you know, shooting the shit. And we were just sitting there talking about how uh, both of us would like to curb our drinking. Because mm -hmm. as you were saying, we're both starting to get the Vince Vaughn face. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Especially when you get like this scrub. Well, that's not fair to him. Vince Vaughn in that. What's that movie where he's going to break up with Jennifer Aniston? That booze face. Yeah, the br yeah, an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> What's that movie where he swings with everybody? <laughs> Swingers. Swingers, yeah, exactly. Um, I, you know something, dude? Like, I was sitting there, like, I used to be a... This, this is how, this is how my, my drinking... This is, this is the history of my drinking. My drinking started, like, it, it, when, I was like uh, when I was, like, 16, 17. Started a little bit late. I did the usual thing. I was, like, the beer drinker, and I, n I never did hard stuff. And right on through, right up until... <clears throat> Right when I was 21, that's when I started messing with hard stuff. And then I got busted for drinking and driving. And then I was like, all right, I'm, I'm a fucking loser. And uh, then, then uh, you know, I started doing comedy. Then I didn't drink at all just because the guys I started off with didn't drink. And somewhere along the line, the last four or five years, I started kind of drinking again. I went on that Chappelle Show tour. Oh, and I really yeah. saw how it had nothing to do with the guys I was on, but we were going out every weekend. And I really realized how if you go out every weekend and you're on the road... How you quickly you can become an alcoholic? Yeah, because you're bored out of your mind. These places we were going to, even when you go into cities where there's stuff to do, you're so tired from doing radio and that type of thing. You you know you go up to the bar. So I, I I started with Heineken's, and then what happens? I was starting to get my uh, my freckled, pasty gut, and I'm like, okay, I got to stop doing that. And then I switched over to vodka, and then you know two of those, and I was fine. And then next thing you know, I'm doing vodka to beer. Like whoever whoever I'm drinking with, and uh, now I'm under whiskey, Joe. <laughs> That's exactly that was exactly my progression. It was beer. Then I started to drink uh, around 21. I started to drink rum. When rum. did you first start drinking? I was old. I was not old, but uh, eight, 17, I guess. You know, I, I that's kind of nerdy, man. Yeah. You like me, man? Like a lot of people who are the 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 the, the rebels as far as like suburban. You know, I inner city late. kids are doing smack at like eight. But yeah. I mean, as far as like being a rebel in the suburbs, you know, I started late. In fact, through most of high school, I was really against the idea of it. I thought it was like a loser thing to do, whatever. And then on my senior prom, I got wasted on vodka and I was like, this is awesome. But then it was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. picture, you know, sloppy and some for some reason, the tuxedos that one from uh, was it Dumb and Dumber? <laughs> yeah, it was blue tuxedo. Puking on your ruffles. But no, I, I but then I but I drank beer and then I switched to rum, and Ugh. and then like rum, I was all, all about rum and coke. And then I, you know, I had too many nights where I got sick from rum, and I I literally can't even smell the stuff anymore. But then my buddy, I went back to beer after that, and then I moved to Texas, and my buddy in Texas was like, "You like, uh, you know, you like uh, rum and coke?" And I'm like, "Yeah, but I can't drink." He goes, "Well, no, no, dude, drink whiskey and coke." So I started drinking whiskey and coke. Then he was like. You should drink whiskey on the rocks. And I was like, dude, that's disgusting. No fucking way. Oh, first way. time you drink it, it, it tastes, Never. the aftertaste is like, you ever had that, Danny? It tastes like an ashtray. Who you, come on, who are you talking to? I, know, I can't believe I said that like, like, like I was talking about, uh, yeah, I went to Paris. You ever go to Paris? <laughs> talking about whiskey where you can get in like every three feet in Manhattan. Yeah. I really am an asshole. Sorry about I, I, that. that used to be my drink. I used to drink uh, Makers on the Rocks. That used to be all I did drink for a while. Yeah, I was hooked after oh, that. I was, I, that, that, was, that was it. When I had that, I was like, it tastes this like is... candy. It's delicious. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, that's the big turning point where somehow whiskey went from like, ugh, I don't know how you guys drink this, to like you drink it and it gives you that relaxed feeling. And then you move to that, like you drink it and you, and you hear yourself making noises like, hmm, <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> or ah, like you just had a nice drink of water. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I, 
And especially if you smoke, like like having a cigarette with a glass of whiskey. I mean, geez, it's just it's it's awesome. It tastes great. It's really. But that good. you know what? That's the thing that is scaring me. Is I fucking love it. I like yeah. going up. I like the way the the bottles look. Yeah. I like like when you go into the bar and it's all lit up. I have, mean, I I love going. I fucking love going out. Do you ever drinking. have a uh, Do you ever have a Manhattan? This no, is that what always, scares me, dude. This that is sounds gay to me. me. Anytime no. it has got a cute name to it. Oh, it's you ever not have a gay. twisty pop? No, it's not gay. Manhattan is whiskey with sweet vermouth in it, so it's adding booze to the whiskey. It's it's basically a a, a, a like a whiskey martini is basically yeah. what it is. Oh wow! And it adds so it but the sweet vermouth. Even it's like though a it's, speedball, basically. <laughs> even though sweet vermouth is is booze, it makes the whiskey easier to drink, dude. And they put a cherry in it. <laughs> and dude, it goes down like juice. And I swear to God, the first time I ever had God one. God damn it, I gotta try it. First time I ever had one, I turned to my buddy and I go, When I was a little boy and I would watch <laughs> I would watch people I swear to God, I'm not making this up. I would watch people drink whiskey on TV. This is how I always imagined it would taste. <laughs> I always pictured it being some somewhere between iced tea and alcohol, you know? And that's what a Manhattan tastes like. Well, you know what is funny? Dude, they are so dangerous, dude. Four or five of those things, you are <laughs> four or five. Flying. Jesus Christ, Jesus. four or five whiskey, I'm done. You're flying, dude. I mean, there's a lot of. I mean, that's basically a martini glass filled with booze. I used to be a bartender, so I mean, unless they're making them weak, four or five Manhattans, you are fucking. Trashed. Yeah, you're out of your head. You're trash. That's why. I, that's why I think I need to maybe stop drinking. Now, I can how, drink how, four or five. How yeah. how is that? Because what I like about drinking whiskey on the rock rocks out there is you don't get a hangover. I definitely wake up the next day no. Knowing that I've been drinking, but I don't feel like there's not that pounding, dehydrated headache. Because there's no, sh there's not a lot of sugar. It, in it. Well, That's it's not that sugar. there's not a lot of sugar. It's just you're not you're not adding sugar by mixing by cutting it with Coke or sodas or anything like that. Uh -huh. You're just having the whiskey itself. You you start to get into hangover trouble when you start adding sugar it, to sugar. Because that that's a, that's a big argument I've noticed between some of them in bars. I know what the arguments are. The people uh, vodka drinkers. Versus, uh, versus, uh, you know, any sort of whiskey, brown liquor, that kind of thing, and like, I, I was convinced for a while, like vodka, because it was clear that, I w but I would still get hangovers. I think it's maybe like a chemical makeup, but dude, I drink whiskey, man. It's, it's nothing. Just wake I up the next day, dude, Joe. I'm doing three push-ups just like you. <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm the, I'm the most hungover when, uh, when, uh, w the, like. Uh, and, Anything Spin it sweet, out, Joe. I know. Jesus I'm Christ. sorry, I'm having a hard time. Uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> Anything sweet, you know. Um, you know, beer never makes beer's got a lot that of that sugar little in that it, little think, cherry but... they put on your drink, dude. Let me tell you something. You eat that cherry that's been just sitting in whiskey and vermouth, dude. It's like you wish. I wish they sold those things in the fucking <laughs> Valentine's Day <laughs> packages. Dude, I used to I used to drink <laughs> gin martinis. Like, like I couldn't get enough of them. I just, it was just I discovered something new, and that was all I drank for a long time. Was just just straight dirty gin martinis, and you know those olives, man. There's nothing better than a fucking just a gin soaked olive. Yeah, it's well, delicious. I'm not a martini guy, and I'm not a big vodka guy, but I eat the olives out of people's martinis if they'll let me because it just, just just sitting. I'm in glad the you said booze. if they let me because I was just yeah. really thinking your awful piano fingers <laughs> just dipping into yeah. somebody's drink. You don't mind, do you? Hey, look, Elvis. Yeah. The guy looks away. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. You know, neither one of you guys strike me. No no offense. It's like these classy guys with smoking jackets. Like, I always picture, like, that's how you have to be. You're wearing, like, an, what is that, an ascot or whatever the fuck you call it? Like, tied around your neck. Like, that's how you drink a martini. I always thought to that that was like a chick drink. Tomorrow night. Or if you're like a Rockefeller. Tomorrow, I mean, I'm, you know, you got to be chomping on a big cigar. I, mean, I don't know how it could be interpreted as such because it's, it's just nothing. It's basically a glass full of booze. You know what it is? It's the glass. Yeah, and that's what it is, and that's why sometimes when I would go to bars, I would ask for it, but I would say just put it in like a put it in like a rocks glass or something okay, because I didn't it. want to walk around a fuck a martini glass. All right, so I don't know. We, we're uh, so I don't know, Joe. I, I don't know how like where you. S I have this weird thing like I know that drinking is bad for you, and they always talk about how bad for you is, but nobody really talks about how how fun it is. Like that's do you, ever, you ever get that? Is there anything better than what you find a new bar and just when they have like the the booze bottles lit up? They put one of those fish tank lights oh, behind it. Beautiful. Oh, I, yeah. I have dreams, extensive daydreams about what my bar will look like when I when I can afford to have a bar like in my basement or something. Yeah, that's why I think I'm never going to be a parent because what kind of parent would would be thinking something like that? Yeah. Well, you know, I the dude. It's I love drink. Could you imagine going on the road without drinking? I mean, 
It'd be the mm. worst thing ever. I actually wrote one time in my computer, right? What will make me happy on the road? And one of it was just finish, finish, uh, you know, do your show, be done with your show. We're, we're actually dealing with like a phone call coming in here. So I'm like literally talking and there's nobody looking at me. I'm listening okay. to you though. Um, to I, I, I literally made this thing like, what will make me happy on the road? It was like, don't hang out with people that I don't give a shit about. Finish my show. Just go home, go to bed. Dude, and I did it. One gig. I couldn't believe how great I felt in the fucking morning, but I was just bored. Like, yeah. that night, man, I was bored out of my mind. What are you supposed to do? There's nothing to do. You got to... What are you going to do? There's nothing to do. You know, it's like... You... <laughs> <laughs> I heard you the first time, Joe. <laughs> I'm really hearing you wrestling with your, with your al alcoholism. It's Dude, just... why don't we... You should just, we should just crash an AA meeting. And just ask that question. Get up there on the podium. I still. What do you do? Yeah. What, what are you supposed to yeah, do? I'd like to go into a meeting and go. Yeah, it's real easy to quit when you go into a fucking queer office every day. Go ahead, have fun. Go sit in your office. Yeah, I could quit too if I didn't have to go on the fucking road and sit in Tempe, Dude, Arizona I love those, by the, myself. I love those AA meetings. You go in there, and it's like that part of that drinking and driving thing, which uh, it, you know was obviously you know. It was one of the stupidest things I ever did. I used to drink and drive when I was younger. like like an idiot. Like one of the most adult things I've yeah. ever done. I, I was out in L.A. this past week, and uh, we went to go see uh, – me and Nia went to go see uh, uh, Velvet Revolver, mm -hmm. and we wanted to drink, and we were just like, let's get a cab. And we actually took a cab. Yeah. I never felt more adult. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I, got, I, I got blitzed. That's it's smart. a great thing. I, uh, I, uh, I used to do that, too. When I was in college, I'd drink and drive. I got pulled over drinking and driving, and they didn't give me a fucking breath allowance. They are like, you're swerving. Are you all right? And I was like – yeah, I'm just tired. And the guy was like, all right, well, you know, open your window and stay awake. Dude, you with your awful joints, if you ever had to sit there and try to walk a straight line. Yeah, I know. Just regular. I'd be fucked. Dude, you know? that's your out. What, what, what's, your, what's your debilitating disease that you have? <laughs> Officer, joint I'm not, laxity. I'm not drunk. I have joint laxity. There you go. You learned something if you listen to the show. <laughs> Next time you get pulled over by the cops, either say I'm tired, I'm tired, and I have joint laxity. All right. So we got... Uh, we got Dave on the phone here to talk. David with Tell, David hey. Tell, uh, uh, comedian extraordinaire. Dave, we're uh, we're talking. Well, first of all, welcome to the show, and uh, we're talking about uh, alcoholism. Uh, I don't know, sort of like the positive side. Like no one talks about like how fun drinking is, and uh, the difficult. Right. <laughs> Nobody does talk about that. You know, it's like those smoking commercials. Nobody talks about the good things. About <laughs> yeah, so. we were talking earlier. Like, do you ever just like walk into a bar and you just sort of stare at like the liquor bottles? You know, is there kind of backlit? As my friends, yeah, they look like they're uh, like about this, like a choir, like they're going to sing. <laughs> first off, I want to say one thing. Congratulations on your show. Thank I guess you. This is the first day, right? No, this is like the the I think the seventeenth episode. I think we're one of like nine million comedians who are. Uh, yeah, but that's the beauty of what you guys do. It feels like it's the first time every time. <laughs> <laughs> So what? You guys what are, you, are like Juno. You're like you. You, you brought back <laughs> teen pregnancy. You. You guys are great. Thank you, Dave. Thank Dave, you, Dave. Uh, have you have you ever tried like uh, quit quitting drinking? Do you even try? Because like I've actually, I've actually attempted maybe like three times in the last year, and I'm just I've kind of gotten to this point where I'm just I I think I just enjoy drinking. Well, your name's Billy on this, right? You don't have like a radio name, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like Billy Bobcat or something, or uh, I, I don't use my last name. Are you like the squeeze or something? <laughs> yeah, anyway, I, I, Billy, I, I've never ever really seen you. You seem like the the coolest drunk because you never really seem drunk to me. I'm actually I feel like I'm drunk all the time. I'm a happy drunk. You're a happy drunk. Yeah, somehow I'm angry when I'm sober. When when I get drunk, yeah, I'll start. I don't no, know. so then so then alcohol works the way it's supposed to for you. That's that's great. It's supposed to make you forget everything. Yeah, yeah I'm, you know what I'm like? I'm like the, the, the hacky drunk character that guys used to do in, like, sketch comedy in, like, the 1950s. Uh -huh. Like Jackie Gleason, that Rip Van whatever character used to do. That's oh, that. right, right, right. Yeah, that guy with the, with the pencil musk. Yeah, the little... Bill, Bill, he raises a good point. I have to give you the thumbs up that you stay quite composed. And, uh, you know, you get a little cheery and a little chipper. You do get a little glazed 16-year-old girl stare in your eye like you were drinking <laughs> under a bridge in the woods or something. But aside from that, you're chipper. You know, I've had I've had nights. Dave, you've I'm witnessed this. Toilet, guys. What do you think of that? Huh? <laughs> you you I, I you never get to that point that I get to where I'm literally swaying in fucking circles. Like I'm just like oh, and yelling at big black guys who you can't beat the shit out of. <laughs> That's what Joe likes to do. Is he backs up out of the uh, 
out of the room. Dave, I got to admit, you know, for as much as I drink, I don't think I've drank with you that many times. Have I? What does that tell you? I think you don't like me. No, I, I like you a lot. I just, uh, you know, I, I guess maybe what it is is maybe I'm an older guy, you know. You're a young, hot guy with a shaved head. <laughs> Uh, you look like an astronaut from the 60s. <laughs> you look like you're about to have a beer and then hit, hit a Gemini rocket. <laughs> well, one, one of these days, I don't know. Keys. Dave, I have to say, some of the some of the happiest uh, drinking moments I've had have been with you uh, ending up at Mr. Biggs. And yeah. then, uh, you know, we'll be... You totally think me out, Joe. Go ahead. Let's let's give it give our whole... We we go to like five bars in New York City. There's only five thousand bars here, but it seems like not, the thing about uh, me is that you know you get the routine of the bars. You have like the one bar you go to, then the one bar you go to when you think like you shouldn't go back to that first bar, and then there's the Plan Z bar. You know where you go. You're like, <laughs> uh, nobody cares what you're doing here. You know. <laughs> I almost got beat up by a union man in there a couple what, times really? ago. Yeah, I writer. S- no, it's when, the stage, the was over. when the stage hands were on strike, it happened. I was I was arguing with a waitress from the comic strip. She goes, I would never, she's an actress and a waitress. She goes, I would never date a comic because you guys are all fucking crazy. And I go, really? I go, well, you're an actress. That's like if you were in a play and you heard a stage hand say, I would never date an actress because they're all fucking crazy. And, and this big guy who was in the union comes up and he goes, Literally, like out of a Burt Reynolds movie, hey, why don't you leave the lady alone? Like, she's a nice girl. And I was like, dude, fucking mind your own bit. This guy was three That's times. That's one of the worst ways to try to get, like, pussy yeah. is to try to go over there and be like, I'm going to defend your honor. Yeah, and I go, what's your fucking problem, dude? Back off. I'm talking to her about something. And he's like, he's like, she's a cute girl. Leave her alone. So then I'm wasted. I start going, oh, because she's a cute girl. She, I, I got to agree with her. Ooh, fucking retard. Right? And he starts poking me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> my friend Bjorn was there. Do you have this there. on video? I want to see this on no, YouTube. But, but Bjorn was there. You guys know Bjorn. He stood in the middle of us with his... <laughs> with his... Stand know, down hands? With his sport coat, uh, you know, uh, go Bjorn between. Bjorn down. He works out. With kids. <laughs> but uh, did you find out what play he was a stagehand on? Maybe that would have told you. I think it was... Um... You know, uh, no, if it was did... Jersey Boys, then he's kind of a rough and tumble stage hand. But if th- it was, uh, I think it was the know, color uh, purple. Avenue Q, then <laughs> I would think he could have taken him. It was the color purple. He was upset that not only were they on strike, but it was coming to a close, and Oprah okay. had taken the funding away, and that was it. Yeah, no, I, I drink a lot, and um, <laughs> I'm trying to drink just vodka now. I don't know. Uh, I used to drink a lot of whiskey with you guys, and uh, you know, whiskey is just like a, it's a real commitment. It really is. What was the yeah like Dave like I've I've actually wanted to ask you that what what made you make the jump from whiskey to vodka like you honestly think that vodka is a safer alcohol? I don't know. Everybody always goes you should just drink vodka, and then I just started drinking it, and it was a different kind of thing because I don't really get hungover because I usually eat so much when I get home. You know, waking up with like sandwiches half made and you know like <laughs> lucky pan in the you know in the toilet. You know, so I I usually don't don't get that hung over but uh yeah the whiskey just just brings out the you know brings out everybody it brings out all the evil vodka takes a longer time and girls like vodka better you know and i'm a girl <laughs> i can vodka girl drunk. i don't mind vodka i'm not a big fan of it though it, it, like when i shoot it, it it hits me right in the back of the throat it makes me want to fucking puke man I can't. yeah yeah it does give you the acid reflux yeah i can't uh I, I i wish i could go back to it because i feel like it is a little more tame of an alcohol than whiskey, but... Uh, you have to do with who's president, you know? During the Bush years, whiskey, he's supposed to be like a southern guy, you know, like he's the all shot kind of rednecky dude. You know, I wish... I... Like, let's say Obama gets in there, I guess we'll be drinking like a rum, you know? <laughs> like a Rambui or something, you know, because he's kind of exotic. I just want... Hillary's in there, you know, we'll be drinking like, um, I don't know, don't you get... You guys are good writers, anything? Maybe a rum. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we could go back to the days when, like, alcohol was more accepted. Like, you ever watch, like, those old Mary Tyler Moores? And if Mary's having, like, a bad day, Lou takes, like, a bottle of scotch out of the bottom of his desk. Come on, man. Sit down. Yeah. Have a a drink. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, why why, why is that so... Everything's so fucking taboo now. And it's like, alcohol, I mean, they really... It's starting to become demonized. And it sucks. Could you imagine if you did... You couldn't do that on a TV show 
ever, like ever, 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 ever. Yeah, but I gotta admit, dude, I can't go on stage shit face. I go on stage shit face, like I'm like. You used to be able to in the '80s. I wish I did comedy in the '80s when it was just a goddamn blow and whiskey fest. It was yeah, half the- yeah, but that doesn't work going on stage all drunk. No, you, you, you can't do it. And then get drunk until the next time. You can't do it, but you know, <laughs> I'd like to have the Lenny Clark story, you know, about oh you know, yeah, what well, it was like in Boston, the Boston in the comics, '80s. They had it. You know, they were the ones who really pushed it. They. Those guys were, uh, you know, that was that was a time I don't even know of that time really, of the crazy Boston comedy world. Yeah, dude. When I when I started in comedy, everybody was everybody was was uh, started their act. Every headliner in Boston started their act with. So I've been sober for six months, and then they get like the applause break. Everybody had kind of at that point cleaned up their act, and the IRS was like garnishing their wages. <laughs> so, every, seriously, man. Everybody I came up with, like we all like abstained. Because they were all like, kind of like the behind the music comedians. What would you, Dave? Dave, what would you do? We were talking about this earlier. What would you do on the road if you didn't? If you if you had to not drink, how would you keep yourself entertained? High lie. High lie. <laughs> I would do what all the sober comics do: ask the drunk comic if he wants to go to a movie in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I was wondering if you want to go to eat around uh, noon and get something to eat. Uh, then I have to work out, so that's when we'll have to end our day. <laughs> now the show. Oh but shit! I, I've I, been I, that I guy. Get, I always have to do radio in the morning, so I, I try not to drink that night. And then uh, you know you get like one night of real drunkenness now because there's so much work to be done. You know, if it's not setting up the merch table, you know that's <laughs> merchandise for the listeners out there. <laughs> for the listener, the, <laughs> yeah, dude, I. I seriously don't. I don't know what the fuck I would do. I would. I try. I was trying to, like, behave myself in certain cities, and I was like, there, like I remember I was in Sacramento, and I was trying to be good, and like there was a comic book store, and I was going to this comic book store every fucking day and buying comic books, and it was like the saddest, most. Path- it was so. Where was this? Sacramento. Boring in Sacramento. Well, Sacramento is the worst city. Well, I guess play. what? We're going to be there together. Uh, so on the end of the month, we can finally booze it up because that staff at that club doesn't fucking hang out at all, man. It's awful. Speaking of that, Dave, really? do you have do you have anything you want to plug to our forty eight listeners? Uh, well, let's see. When is, is this airing now, or is this a time delay? It's time it, delay. Yeah, it's going to be. Well, on I thought Saturday. you guys were putting together a tape to get a show. Is this yeah. the real show? <laughs> no, this is a real oh. show. Uh, I better bring my A game. Uh, I will be at the. Um, hold on, let me see. MySpace. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I got a gig coming up in uh, Cobb, San Francisco, uh, the 20-something. Okay. So- and uh, from there, it's uh, San Diego and then Vegas. So those are my three uh, gigs. All right, so up. all the truckers out there who are listening, you park your rigs and go to uh, David Tell's show coming up at Cobb's in San Francisco. Yeah. Dave, thanks for calling in, man. We appreciate all right, it. Thanks for having me. All, all right, right, Dave. I'll see you at the cellar. See you, man. All, all right, right, man. Later. That was all fun. Right. Okay. That was funny. All right, so... So we have another guy here. We should. What do you want to? Do you want to? Yeah, take bring a little him in. Breather before Julian comes. Yeah, in, okay. You... We'll, we'll take. We'll take a break real quick. We're uh, talking about uh, whatever alcohol. I guess <laughs> the upside to alcoholism. Like and nobody's yeah. really saying how to stop. We're all just saying how we kind of enjoy it, and yeah. we're all functioning. I pay my taxes. Well, that's what we could talk with Julian about. Is like it's like if if there's a such thing as a functioning alcoholic, how the fuck do you even know if you're an alcoholic? Yeah, I mean, how much ridiculous. damage do you really think you're doing? Yeah. If we we got to get on the internet or something during this break. Maybe we'll have some information we can give you. All right. All right. You're listening to Uninformed. Keep it here. Uninformed with Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. All right. We're back. Uninformed, Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. Joe, I'm really going to pick up that album. Joe's yeah. Been, yeah. What, what ACDC Ball Break. I have it if you want me to burn it for you. Joe, why would you advocate stealing music <laughs> over the airwaves? ACDC would not approve. <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. They're not on iTunes, are they? No. Yeah, which makes me think Sucks. that the iTunes guy is, is a dick. No, I think that's the artist's choice. That's what I'm saying. ACDC wouldn't go with anybody who's a dick. <laughs> so that's what I learned the second that ACDC was not on iTunes. I'm like, these, there's, there's something about these guys. They're dicks. Led Zeppelin's not on there either. No. They have all, all those people who uh, who sort of <laughs> like do like covers, like Dread Zeppelin. No, like the Zeppelin's chick one. on there now. They just added the whole Zeppelin catalog. Joe, I was on a roll. I know. I was you know, why say, why, why think... would you do that? <laughs> Well, if your role is unresearched, Bill, there's no. <laughs> That's what the show is. It's uninformed, you <laughs> well, fucking you draw asshole. Well, you a line somewhere, Bill. <laughs> Just eat your pizza. Add to that fucking torso that you can't get off the floor more than three times. 
Joe, you are three push-ups away from being able to book that commercial, that hacky, I've fallen and I can't get up. <coughs> nothing? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Well, it didn't help Sit that, that you, you, you hacked up a lung in the middle of it. Nothing again. <laughs> What happened? I was, I was trashing. I was trashing, his, I was trashing your awful torso, and somehow I lost everybody. You mm. did, because it got mean, Bill. It got hurtful. I didn't know you had anybody. Julie, <laughs> Julie McCullough, by the way. Julie McCullough hey. just showed up. Uh, Julia, you know, what I realized as I went to introduce you early in the show, I had no idea what your fucking last name is. <laughs> I was just like, you know what? When you have a name like Julian, it's you, you, you don't need a last name. I'm like Cher. Yeah, exactly. Axel Cher. <laughs> Julian, <laughs> but you did make a good point earlier. I I can't think of any other besides Julian Lennon. I can't think of one Julian. Casablanca. No one ever says. Uh, I ran. Everybody goes like Derosa. Ran into Joe Derosa. Mm-hmm. Attell, Dave. People. Julian. Mm-hmm. Dude, that's it's gonna be your sitcom someday. <laughs> Julian on yeah, ABC. I'll be You're, a hairdresser. Yeah, when they <laughs> yeah when they remake My Two Dads, and he plays who's it? Greg the, Evigan. Yeah, like, Jesus. Greg Evigan. Right. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. Do you, do you own that is, on is DVD? That your, is no, that what your torso just... was full of useless information from the eighties? <laughs> <laughs> it was just always a fantasy of mine to have two dads. So I really you know so you was get into the show. At twice a night. That's yeah, excellent. yeah, oh, wow. but Julian, Julian's a guy. Uh, we actually, uh, I don't know when the first time you met him, but it was you know going out to the stress factory. Julian, you started out, you yeah. you were doing would, do like the sound <laughs> out in uh, uh, the stress yeah. factory for Vinny. You know what I love? I was tr- I was trashing Vinny for this last time I was at the stress factory. He's got you know. Anybody Julian, who trashes Vinny Brand, I, I really always enjoy. Julian <laughs> was this kid at some point. You know, it's like Vinny does that prank call thing from the stage. Mm-hmm. And it's all hooked into that fucking you know sound system and everything. So he's trying to do the call and it's fucking up. He's got some fifteen year old kid back on the soundboard, and Vinny's going, "Remember when I told you to make sure this works <laughs> properly? I'm got you better run out of here, man. I'm pissed. I'm p-. and I, so I get on stage to go, Vinny. Hey, sorry, the fifteen year old fucking dishwasher <laughs> doesn't know how to work your NASA sound system in here. <laughs> like, give the kid a fucking break. You know what he expected? You know, Jesus Christ. And you know what's great about Vinny? He's he's got a uh, uh, he can't hear, and he especially can't hear when he's being slammed. Like whenever you're slamming Vinny, he's always like, "What?" He always takes the steam. what? What did you say? Yeah, he always turns, takes the turns steam that one out ear. Of the, the better the better your slam is, the more he didn't hear it, and it just takes all the steam out. And you got to say it again. You know, and like, you know what else he does that when he slams you from the stage as he brings you up, and then you get on stage and start fucking with him, and he yeah. walks around and acts like he can't hear yeah, you. Yeah, not at all. Oh, that uh, burns me up. Um, oh, does that really get my <laughs> goat? That really chaps my hide. All right, well, we're, uh, we brought Julian today because uh, he's another well-known drinker on the scene. Yeah. And uh, it's really made a big comeback, man, because like I said, when I, I started off in 1992 uh, doing stand-up uh, – when the first Bush was was president, and Dan Quayle jokes were just you, you know, <laughs> yeah. were a dime a dozen. But dude, every headliner was 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 in AA, and they had mm-hmm. all cleaned up. And we saw grunge the, was big. We, we saw yeah, everybody was wearing <laughs> flannels. Exactly. Start actually when that that came in like I started my career with the tucked in shirt. And within six months, the shirt was untucked, and I don't think it's ever come back. That's because when you first started, you still had a job. Did I? You're right. <laughs> I did. No, I was I was a college kid. No, but I'm just saying in general there was yeah. it was still the the like my it was early '92, so we'd only you know like a year and a half, two years into uh, to the '90s. So like remember the waist length leather coat yeah. with the shoulder pads <laughs> that had just left. <laughs> So then, like, the, the, when's the, it coming back? Yeah. So, yeah, I like, could so use that. W- yeah. when when did when did you when, when did you, you start doing Joe in a jacket? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I need. I could use those. Oh shoulder shit! Pads. I know, yeah, right? Yeah. Shoulder, so I'm yeah. saying. There you go. The That's shoulderless one. Yeah. yeah. You could. That's sh- a great album title. The shoulderless one. <laughs> Joe DeRosa. Yeah. I just pictured yeah. dry ice in the background as you said that. The shoulderless <laughs> one. I pictured more like a western. We should look into if a maternity wear has a leather jacket that Joe could get. I really, uh, Julian's a hard guy to, to snap with because, you know, he's got that fucking look like he was hanging out with Owen Wilson all night. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's Julie, a good looking nah. kid and he's, you know, he's got that slick fuck. Look at that fucking pompadour hair, dude. You I, know, I just it's... wake up and it looks like this. Yeah, but you know what? Julian, Julian's one of those <laughs> guys, like, he's going to look great until, like, this one day and it's just all going to fall gonna, apart. <laughs> gonna, that's like what 43. I always think of. I can see it. Right up until being 43, but what are you, like, 29, 30? 28. Eh, no, I'm going to be, uh, you know, I'm actually going to be 42. The day you hit 43, 
Man, he got old. I yeah, swear to Vince God, what happened to Vince Vaughn? Look at him now. I swear I to know, God, right? I've I've thought I've I've had I've had detailed fantasies in my head about <laughs> Joey and I hang out a decent amount of us being on like Leno or something. Mm-hmm. He won't it won't be Leno then, but whoever it is, and you being like that, like you hit a certain <laughs> age where you weren't good looking anymore. Yeah. But I I kind of like looked all right as an old man, and right. you say to me on the show, "What happened? Remember when I was better looking than you?" That's that's how the fantasy plays out in my I head. There's, but there's no punchline in your fantasy? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a fantasy. I'm not going to bog it down with punchlines. Oh, I'm going right. to make it easy on myself. Okay. That's what you do, Joe, when you just sit around and you think about talk shows in the future? Yeah, it's like what kind of banter we might have, you know? You know what I might do? I might start looking really weird and start getting face, uh, like plastic surgery like uh, Axel. Don't do, do that. Like You're not going to do that. Like, no. Please don't You're do not going to do no, that. I'm not going to do that. Julian, you though, won't. apparently has an awful body under that shirt. Oh, yeah. I want to see it. No. I want to see it. What would it take to get you to take the shirt off? Oh, I'm not taking the shirt off. Dude, I, you're, you're skinny. I'd be willing to bet our bodies almost <laughs> look the same when our shirts are off. Well, if we can stay on topic here and get back to the alcoholism, maybe that's what it is. And oh, you know what? Definitely. You, you, don't, you don't have the booze face yet. Doesn't hurt that you have I'm, that I'm coal miner's fucking <laughs> scruffy beard, but uh, maybe that's what it is. Do you work out at all or no? I just wanted to tell Joe that uh, it would for me to take the shirt off, you'd have to book me on a better radio show. <laughs> God, is he big enough to trash our show? No. Stop riding no. the coattails of David Tell. David Tell can no. trash us all day. You know all right, what, Julian? Right, why I'm don't sorry. you? Yeah, yeah, exactly. A week exactly. ago, he was sorry, working guys. the red light in, in New Brunswick. Yeah, I know. I just found out your last name. Don't get too big for your out of shape britches. <laughs> okay. We're getting that fucking shirt off. We're going to do a shirt to shirt comparison today. Dude, you know what? Point. I just had a couple slices of pizza. I don't want to watch the two of you. Just like, ugh, that'll look like Borat and stereo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how, how often, well, we're talking about this shit, like, basically what we're trying to, we, we actually try to stay on topic, but this is what okay. usually ends up happening, is Joe ducks away, <laughs> takes another big disgusting bite of that pizza. <laughs> it's like, you know, everybody always, like, trashes, like, uh, you know, drinking, and I know it's unhealthy and all that type of stuff, but I gotta admit, dude, I'm 39 years old, I fucking love it. I love... That issue, precisely about drinking, is... Um the one that I'm facing every day right now is um, I feel like it's I'm not hurting anybody with it, and I'm not right. hurting myself. You know, S- especially am, in New York. You don't drink and drive. You got all these cabs. Right, exactly. Like- but my, my girl won't leave me alone about it, and it's like – I don't hit you. I don't get mad at you. You know what I mean? It's like, what? <laughs> Are you still half drunk as you're saying this? Uh, <laughs> I don't hit you. I'm not <laughs> looking like Mickey Rourke in Barfly with, like, one dress sock on. <laughs> You know, it's funny. I was complaining to another girl about this the other day, and before I said, I don't hit you, I don't hit, she broke in and goes, what do you say to her? I don't hit you. I, don't, yeah. I was, I was going to say that. I was like, no. That's yeah, you're saying retarded. it's like the worst things possible, too. Yeah. It's not like I burn you with my <laughs> cigarettes. Yeah. You know, it's like, that's. You know where I always do? go with my girl? I always go, I buy you stuff. <laughs> I took you out to dinner, you know? Yeah. You well, wanted that sweater? I got it for you. Here's the funny Bill, part. Bill, I need something emotional from you. <laughs> my it's girl, never enough. <laughs> my girl has no qualms about the drinking. No, she your girl likes doesn't. to booze it up with, with the best of them. So yeah. uh, that's the. Um, no, I actually. That actually worries me, to be honest with you, because I'm like, I'm like, one of us should be the voice of reason. Yeah, if I dated your girl, we'd both be dead in like a week. Yeah. How, how many How many days a week do you drink? Seven. Wow. Okay. Now. Two, two apps, six. two apps, <laughs> <laughs> two absolute hammered or uh, I never, I never drink a little. <laughs> oh, I, I never understood that point either. But you have nights here and there where you're not drinking. No, that's what I'm saying. That sometimes six nights a week. But literally, I, but literally, I, but if I had a really bad night the night before, sometimes I can't even start drinking the next night, but it's pretty rare. What's your, what's your drink by the way? Uh, lately it's been, uh, vodka on the rocks with olives. That's what I've noticed. If you notice this one, I think you can gauge when your alcohol, alcoholism yes. is is moving along. Is you you stop when you if you just drink a lot of beer. I don't drink beer anymore. I yeah, you're just a tool. You're just some college <laughs> kid. You're still living your frat boy years. But then once you start being like you know, uh, you know that that eloquent person down well, who's like <laughs> like I've heard like bartenders. If you're a whiskey drinker, they're like okay because it's like a professional drinker. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about this guy starting shit. Right. Of course, Joe is the exception to that rule. Mm-hmm. I don't start shit. When people fuck with my friends, I become... Dude, you turn into that guy in Kung Fu. 
What the hell's his name there? But he, it's he, always in defense of somebody. It's not like I start fights. It's like I just get yeah, delusion so, that I have the ability to protect my friends when I don't. You know? <laughs> a lot all. of times it's in defense of something that you thought you heard. I was what just going to say that. <laughs> hey. I've, been, I've been there where you've, where, where you've uh, started yelling at a dude and he didn't even say what you thought he said. No, you have Yes, not. I have. It was at the when? playwright. It was at the playwright. I don't remember no, what no, you thought what, he said. What happened that night at the playwright? I think he coughed and he and you thought he said adopted and no. you got all pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> what happened that night at the playwright when we almost got into the bar brawl that we were both very disappointed that didn't happen? Yeah, that was one of the rare times I wanted to get into that the That was because that, that we met that guy in the army and then we saw that old man across the bar with the really hot chick that we knew was a hooker. Uh -huh. And the army guy went over to the chick and tried to make out with her. And then I went over to the old guy and tried to I, I tried to buy him a drink to be like, we're sorry, dude. That was a little out of line. Yeah. And the guy was going, get out of here. Get out of here. I was like, dude, I'm trying to be nice. And then the hooker started yelling at me. And then that other guy, <laughs> once again. Some Sounds other, like a sketch. Some and then the midget. Guy, yeah. <laughs> once again, some other guy that had nothing to do with it comes over and he goes, hey, why don't you mind your own business, buddy? The lady's trying to have a drink. Leave him alone. And then I started with that, dude. I was uh, like, okay. dude, it's not your fucking bitch. Is Remember this the that? guy who poked you in the face? That guy also poked me in the face. <laughs> It There's always turns out that somebody gets that between just... us and somebody pokes me in the face. No, that, those are two different stories. But, I mean, it's always something like that. Joe, i got to be honest. You know something? Like, Joe, I don't know if I've, I've never drank with you. No, you, d you didn't drink with me, but I do have a story about being seeing you drunk. Because I didn't even think you drank. And then, uh, and up until this time that I saw you... You're, you're always, like, really short with me. Not like you didn't like me. You just didn't care. No, I mean, and, no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> go with the Go with your gut, Okay, dude. I'm going to go with the first one. No, and, I'm kidding. Uh, no, so, I never had a problem with you. I just have asshole tone. Don't ever tone. take that back again. Don't so, take what uh, back again? <laughs> insulting me. So. He's very chippy. Did you think we were really going to come in here and just, like, really trash you? I mean, no. we're here to have a good time, man. You're, just, you're really coming <laughs> off as, like, uh, Whoa. You're just very <laughs> chippy. <laughs> Yeah, all right. He's a little chippy. I, 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 I would agree. I don't know what chippy means, <laughs> what is, but I'm. Just I would little, agree. Well, I'm it. You're looking at it. Little snippy. Snippy. Yeah. snippy. There you go. That's, that's snippy. A, that's there a we word, go. That's a word people Sassy. use. Um, Sassy. So. Little little back All right. All right. So anyway, you were, we were it was at Caroline's. You had you had headlined the night, and uh, the bar was empty, and I walked in. <laughs> That's usually a good indication I'm drunk yeah, at that yeah, point. Yeah, you were drinking a Heineken at the bar, and I couldn't tell you were drunk. You did have that look in your face like that that Joe was saying, that 16-year-old girl look. The glassy-eyed, yeah. yeah. And I was, uh, and you started talking to me, and you told me, like, Louis Veranda's whole life story, and you told me, um, you, you told me all these <laughs> stories. You told me a lot about you, and I was like, what? And I, I still didn't know you were drunk. It's like when you're eight and your dad's drunk and you don't know why he loves you all of a sudden. <laughs> and, uh, I really am a blabbering like, jackass. I start like, telling <laughs> stories about the sea. <laughs> and there was a nor'easter. So listen, so I, I never figured out. I never figured out that you were drunk. I just thought all of a sudden you accepted me. And then right when you were leaving, you go... I'm sorry, I'm fucking wasted and walked away without saying goodbye. <laughs> so he just like used yeah, me. He does. He gets this fucking he gets this blank stare. I mean, like yeah, But yeah, was... yeah, I do. And I, I, I start talking, I don't know what I'm saying. I but like I'm, got... I'm not I'm not an angry drunk. It's weird. I'm much more angrier in, in regular I don't know. I, I thought alcohol helps me out. Yeah. It does Which what I weed think... does for a lot of people. I don't think people. you're drinking enough. No, I do believe me, I am. Do I'm you? real I'm real. Do you drink shots? About. Shots were always stupid to me. That's yeah. shots, shots, shots to me were is, is an amateur way of drinking where you're just going to get yourself to the point where you're going to puke. I like to sit. I like to sit there, shoot the shit, mm. tell stories in a leather that chair. don't that don't <laughs> that don't connect, and then, abrupt, then fire... abruptly leave. I disagree with that. I'm a is big, there a fireplace usually? I'm a big fan of shots, and that's the only time I'll drink beer. I'll make a conscious decision that I'm going to do a beer, and with every beer I'll get a shot. And I think that's fun. Like going, everybody fucking. I always back think that that moment is, is is like that's always gay to me. Like someone comes up, you guys want to do shot? Want to do? Sh Come on, let's do shot. <laughs> want to do shot? And then then you always have to fucking dumb it down to to the to the weakest palate of the group. That's funny. Hey, that's a good you want to get? You want to do Jaeger? I can't do Jaeger. I can't do Jaeger. Rum? I can't do rum. And then it's always some girly thing with some <laughs> so called and lime. <laughs> yeah, peppermint schnapps. I don't do that. <laughs> I will ridicule the person that wants to dumb it down until they, until yeah, they go, definitely... fine, fine, I'll do the fucking Jaeger. And then they puke or whatever. You know, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't succumb to the weak link. In the I don't, Joe. Though. I sit there like a classy older gentleman <laughs> telling stories yeah. to anyone who will listen. 
with my uh, literally... with my Johnny Black and the Rucks. When that happened, I was literally you were literally standing at the bar. There was no bartender left. You, it was just an empty room, and I walk in, and you turned and just started talking to me, and I was like, "What was he doing before I walked in?" <laughs> Dude, he, he, I have absolutely no <laughs> recollection of he that does whatsoever. That. That's hilarious. He does that all the fucking time, Billy. Get something in his head that he wants to talk about, and uh-huh. he's going to talk about it regardless. Right. And he will literally, literally, this is a voicemail. I'll, uh, t- sometimes twice a day I'll get these from him. Voicemails. Hey, D- uh, DeRosa, what's up, dude? Hey, it's Burr. Burr it's Burr. Uh, dude, what the fuck is up with this thing? Uh, that the, 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 I, I go into Best Buy, dude, dude and he just literally... <laughs> Ten minutes, fucking story, like, as if somebody's listening to it. Yeah, I get two sentences into it, and I just fucking delete it. So I'm like, <laughs> he's the only person that says in a voicemail, "I know what you're thinking, but you're wrong." <laughs> Dude, he left me a voicemail once where I said, "I was," I still have it on here. I don't know why we never played on the show. He called me wasted from his brother's house. He had drank all these vodkas because his brother got a hole in one or some shit, or, or I forget what it was. But you guys were out <laughs> golfing. No, we were no, we were we were golfing, and I I don't golf at all, and yeah. my brother golfs, and he's fucking really good at it, and and it was the final hole. I go, let's put twenty bucks on it, right? And I hadn't hit a good shot all day. I get up there and I just hit one, I just blast one down the fairway like freaking Tiger Woods. He gets all nervous and just hooks his into the tree. And he gave, dude, I, he's such a good golfer. He gave me four strokes on one hole. That's how good he is and how bad I am. I beat him straight up on the hole, and he was fucking <laughs> livid. So he had to buy the drinks in the uh, the clubhouse. So yeah. that, that's what it was. So he calls me, and he's wasted, dude. He's wasted to the point where he's literally singing. <laughs> literally singing. On I'm the a happy phone, drunk. I'm right? not going to apologize. So I call him back like an hour later, and he's obviously passed out. And I leave him a message, and I'm just like, like, hey, sweetheart, could you, are you okay? Could, do you need somebody to somebody come hold your hair while you vomit? Right? I'm just being a dick, right? Yeah. Dude, he calls me. This is how much he thinks he's talking to somebody on the messages. He leaves <laughs> me a ten minute message, and he's <laughs> was like, I still drunk? No, no. It's the next day, and he's like, he's no, like, you're just like this. He calls him. He's like, <laughs> starts out. He goes, DeRosa, <laughs> ah, I just got your message. That was funny, man. Yeah, that was funny. You saying, uh, yeah, I was really wasted. You said you got to hold my hair back while I puke and everything, and like I'm a girl. And you, you know, you know, you know what? Who the fuck made you the authority? And it literally, <laughs> he gets angry, <laughs> like, like it's a real discussion. And he, yeah. His mood changes. <laughs> And by no, the end of it, he's like, you know what? And that's why you're annoying. And go fuck yourself. And he hangs up. He's going, I don't like no, you. No, know, you know what happened? <laughs> was I was thinking it was a good message. And then I'm like, wait a minute. Every time I've gone out with Joe, we've gone drink for drink. He's never drank me under the table. And it just fed into that 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 whole thing where Joe, because he never had real parents, has to he has to build himself up this with his drumming his singing and then his i just thought the drinking was going to be this next thing like you were acting like i had i only had one it's like dude like joe i'm gonna tell you something dude yeah 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 Uh, my my, dude my brothers can my brothers they're salesmen they can drink like salesmen okay like that is that's that yeah those guys are hardcore yeah that's one notch below like you know homeless guy I've yeah. never, Drinking uh, straight NyQuil. I've never heard, like, salesmen, but that's so true. It never occurred to me, but they really drink. Oh, those guys, yeah. yeah. Like, they never stopped. We were talking earlier, you know, you watch That's because they can't let their real feelings come up. So they. Oh, yeah, <laughs> dude, it's, it's, it's such a brutal such job. such bullshit that they can't. Dude, the guys, especially salesmen that go on the road, I mean, those, anybody Is that Is that still goes, a job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? They go on the, it's not like on the road where it's like door to door, but like they go on the road for like conferences and stuff like yeah. that where they have to sell you have to sell bulk or accounts to like big clients yeah. and they have these big fucking parties and shit and whatever. But like anybody that works with travel, anybody that travels like comics, they drink because yeah. there's nothing else you can, you can do. I mean, it's, you know, salesmen do that shit. You know what else? Drinks no, you sell? know what? I just realized, you know, because you, you've escaped your life. There's no bills. There's no mail. Right. You just come into the town. You can be whoever the fuck you want to be. Yeah. yeah. You know? Hotel rooms are so non-judgmental. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, because if you trash your own apartment, you feel really bad the next day. You can literally <laughs> you can literally have a different personality everywhere. Like, oh, this, I think this week I'll be the drinker. Yeah. <laughs> That's every week. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, but I it's don't have half an imagination. That, it's half that on the road, and then it's also half, like, 
am I really doing this with my life? Like, why am I doing this? The solitude and, uh, you know, Dude, I'm really glad. I'm really me. glad he's, he's doing, uh, this gig with me at the punchline in Sacramento later on this month to, to hype it. What is it? Uh, February 29th through March 3rd. Yeah, but I'm there. Good I'm news, actually guys. there the 27th. Open. You're open. <laughs> Dude, you know something? I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it to you, man. That, is that it really city, bad? I, I keep, everyone says it sucks. It, there's just nothing. It's the, it's, there's nothing. You, if you think Albany, you know, Albany is the state capital for some reason mm -hmm. of, uh, yeah, you know, Sacramento is a ca it makes no sense. Yeah. And you'd like, no, like Albany, like that was like in like 1653 where somebody's like, this is the shit. <laughs> Albany's going to be the spot, <laughs> man. The nicest trees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And we're they were just like, look, we got, we got at least 10 teepees here, whatever the fuck, a couple of log cabins. This is a bustling environment. This is the capital of New York. And then it just yeah. keep, that that's like what Sacramento is, where it's like, um, I don't know much about Oakland, other than, you know, I land there and I drive to San Francisco. It seems like a lot of warehouses and stuff, but o like... Oakland's cool. San Francisco's great. Yeah, Oakland. Oakland has like that Brooklyn vibe. Where it's like, exactly they, they, like that. Yeah, it's like, like Williamsburg. Yeah, like where the hipsters go. Yeah, now, but when I I lived in Oakland when I was five, my parents we we lived there and it was it was scary. Right, was I it? was five, but e everybody I remember... looked like Ken Stabler, <laughs> except had Brooklyn some bass in their then. voice. Yeah, it was uh, it was pretty scary. But now it's like, now it's like uh, hipster, and well, then and then okay, well, Sa streets... Sacramento is like you is like Utah without the Mormons. It's like Jersey, <laughs> dude. Sacramento is just like Jersey. No, it's it like isn't. No. Jersey. Jersey, Jersey has Jersey. Fun stuff. Yeah, Jersey also has like they have people with some attitude and there's an accent. Yeah, Jersey girls are the hottest girls in them. No, in, in America. Look, just, at the, look at the people in Sacramento. They look like they look like Italian guys from South Jersey. They're all driving the fucking I rocks. I've never around actually been there. I, I grew up in. Is San it Francisco. like that? Yeah, it dude. Really? I'm telling you. I'm I just remember I didn't have a car and I was going over from the comedy condo. Ugh. And they had, there was a dirty McDonald's. And, dude, there's nothing fucking worse than a dirty McDonald's. Yeah. It's bad enough yeah. to eat. Now, you just know when you go, then there's, like, a French fry with a ketchup on it, like, on the floor. There was some <laughs> crackhead in there. It was, just, it was fucking brutal. I agree. I but, agree. Um, By the, the way, there's nothing better than a really awesome, rich McDonald's. You ever go see one of those? Like, you're in a suburban town where it's like mansions everywhere and then they have a mcdonald's on the main street and yeah and like, it has to blend in with the with the yeah, whole area like because of the it's zoning like code and like it has shutters on the windows and like uh linen on the tables it's linen like, on the tablecloth yeah. <laughs> basically yeah hey for like the nine millionth time we're trying to stay on topic here every time we do one of these uninformed julianists we always have like these <laughs> topics that we're trying to get informed on and uh, we always end up going off track but uh like i guess i don't know we, we were just talking about like whole the whole alcoholism thing I mean, I don't know what basically makes you an alcoholic, but like, like as far as like functioning, if you're like functioning alcoholic, yeah, isn't that okay? That's what I don't get. There's how do you, you, you? There's no way to tell. You know, with food, you know if you're fat or whatever. You know, you have an eating problem or whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> there's it's no like, way to tell. How about um, cirrhosis? Um, well, but yeah, <laughs> but that's such an extreme. Yeah, but that's later, man. That's so much. <laughs> that's true, though. <laughs> I what what Julian right was now. saying, he didn't even that's, know I drank. That's six years from now. But you know, but dude, I mean, you know what I mean? It's like it's like look, look at look at me with food, for example. We were making fun of this earlier. I don't gain a lot of weight, but mm -hmm. I clearly need to change my diet. Like I don't know what's going on in my arteries clearly. and shit like that right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you know what the fucked up part is? My cholesterol, I get it checked once a year. It's always I was just fine. gonna say that. I knew it. It's yo, he's gonna be one of those guys who just like is horrifically out of shape. And it's just like, just has not like my dad. My dad has a gut. His stuff is fun. He's all his stuff. He yeah, comes dude, back to physical. He's fine. fine. And my yeah. mother works out, stays in shape. And she has to actually watch like the salt that she takes. It. Hey, Danny, can you look up some on cirrhosis of the liver? So we actually maybe have some information here as far as like what well, to mean, talk that's about. The thing. It's like, so if you react to alcohol that which that way, which I kind of do, like I, I work, I get everything done. I'm ambitious. I'm, 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 I'm uh, organized. I'm whatever. It's like, you know what? You know what it is about you, alcohol. How do you know? Like, like if you if you smoke cigarettes, like after a while you start getting like the cough, yeah. and th there's like these warning signs. Like, at what point do you start? Is there like a sharp pain you feel in your liver? I don't know. Every once in a while, I, I get like a chest pain. I got to tell you that. That's, you know, that's that's like indigestion, right? That's yeah, fine. That's, well, you don't smoke. Well, how the hell? You know. I found that uh, when I drink, some of the side effects are uh, I become awesome, and. Um, <laughs> Really funny. And Look, good my worst, the worst side effect I can see is there's clearly a depression. There's clearly, you clearly don't feel as good in the mornings and, uh, and as positive as you should. But I got to say, dude, you know, I, I was in AA for three fucking months, man. And by the third month, I went in and I just go, I, I go, I'm leaving. I'm done doing this because I'm more angry and depressed than I've ever been in my life. <laughs> what, what do they say? 
well, no, it's because you know it's, it's not that it's not the boot. You know, it's like, dude, you know that's the that's the devil thing about AA is that I'm not saying it doesn't help people, <laughs> but I'm saying like you go in. And once you step in there, you are an alcoholic, no matter what. Yeah, if you study, if you annoying. read their guidelines of alcoholism, everybody's an alcoholic. Yeah, and it's it's ridiculous. It's not something that's that concrete. There's a lot of gray area here, which is why we're having this Dude, discussion. I, I would love to go in there and try to break their sobriety, just by going in there and just saying I'm an alcoholic. But you know what? I got it down, man. I can do it once a week. <laughs> I got this system. Come on, they, guys. How they, fun was it? Come on, guys. It was awesome, they right? They have, uh, you know. This is actually but something. Those people's stories are always so brutal that you feel guilty being there. You yeah, I, I would mean? never do that. I just well, that's my a... thing. It's like you don't until you have that story. One time, I was so drunk I ate a bottle. They always have that story too, where it's like you know I got arrested. Uh, you know, I was hammered. With they arrest with my baby in yeah. my arms. They arrested me. I got <laughs> raped in prison, and they let me out. And I just went right back to the liquor store. <laughs> it's like when I heard those stories, I'm like, okay, those guys. So I, I don't think I'm an alcoholic. Yeah, but I, I think joy. Oh, good. But I mean, they, they literally say if if you get if you get uh, what 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 is the fucking information that we should have in front of us? Where it's like if you get if you drink like two three times a week, like you have a problem. Yeah, dude. Do you tough. know how low the numbers are, dude? The numbers are ridiculous. Like what you're supposed to really, dude? You, like you're not supposed to drink more than like four alcoholic beverages a week. No, one like a day. That? I always say one a day is good to keep the blood going. No, a <laughs> glass of red wine a day is good for your heart. That's from the menu at Olive Garden. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Red wine. I can't drink. A, like I was thinking, if I had one one whiskey, no, it was yeah, good. if you have one whiskey a day, they dude. Say my it's doctor good for you. saw. I wrote fifteen alcoholic drinks a week. That's all, and then I was lying. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I wrote that on That's my like two nights on my yeah. survey. When I got to my new doctor, and he was like, yeah, we're going to have to talk about this. I want to do a blood test make sure you're not doing any damage. What? He's like, that's a lot. He's like, that's, he's like, that's <laughs> a rough, he's like, that's almost five drinks a day. Do you realize that? And I was like. No, it isn't. No, I go, isn't. yeah, I go, this, guy's a, sh- this guy's a doctor. <laughs> yeah. Seven times five is 35, Joe. <laughs> he's like a. Uh... He was, I guess he was meaning like weak. Wait a minute. No, then I said 25, because I remember what it was. It was, he, he broke it down to five drinks per day for five days. So excuse me. Um, and I was like, yeah, but I don't do it over five days. I was like, you I, know, I take I put two. The truth. I put the truth once and they almost didn't let me leave without like getting help. Cause I put like 80. <laughs> they were like, <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. It's like 80. Well, let's do the math. A week. Seven if into I, 80. I'm, that's one drunk, with one left over. You drink 11 <laughs> drinks a night. Yeah, plus, I would plus say some last, change. Last night I drank at, le- at least 11. Jesus, Julian. Yeah. I'm glad we did. This might turn into an intervention. Yeah. Not again. Every time I start talking about how much I drink, Dude, people want to... He was... People get alarmed. We did this reality, this pilot for a reality show together. <laughs> I refuse to see that as a sign. <laughs> we did this as a pilot. We did a pilot for a reality show together. Where, <clears throat> I told you about this. The comics were in group therapy together. Uh-huh. And, um, and uh, uh, he talked about his drinking. <laughs> And everybody was like, immediately, everybody <laughs> except me was like, yeah, yeah, you still need laughing. to go to a meeting. <laughs> you have a problem. Who I don't say you have a problem. Like, you, you need you need to cut it down, man. I felt no, like 80 is a lot for a whole week. I would, I would say it's more like 60, 70. I'd say on average, dude. <laughs> I'd say on average, you probably have six, six or seven drinks in a night. I've, I've drank with you plenty of times, dude. The other night we drank all night together, and we didn't have eleven drinks each. Maybe we did, dude. I'll drink. I'll drink four. What are you trying to bury, Julian? Huh? What are you trying to bury, man? How many drinks did Emotion- you drink? Emotionally, <laughs> I got it. How I many drinks it. did you drink during, <laughs> during the show at Caroline's? How many uh, drinks did you have during the show at Caroline? When on Friday? On Friday? Did I get? I don't. I'm really bad at remembering. I I think I had like uh, four. Oh, oh oh okay. I remember. I had like three or four highballs of um, uh, scotch and soda. So that's like two shot two two shots in each glass, right? So I had like three or four of those, and then I had two or three uh, vodka on the rocks. What's a highball? Yeah, like, tall thin glass. Tall thin glass. Yeah. And what they put two shots, and then they put some soda yeah, in there. Soda, yeah, for color. And then. Uh, so I had that, and then I did shots with you. So that's like if you count a drink by All right, let's every count, shot. Let's count the drinks because I started. I started drinking at the second spot. I didn't drink at Caroline. So 
Well, you okay. guys drink like the fucking Rat Pack. So you had three. I had a sarsaparilla <laughs> and, a, and a highball to start it. So you had three at the. And at then Caroline's. the dames showed up. Yeah. <laughs> then we went to the Comedy Village. I had. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I had. Got, oh, I had. I had way more than eleven drinks that night. I had, th <laughs> I had three at the Comedy Village. You had two. I remember that because you left and I stayed there. But I came back. Yeah, and you came back. So yeah. I had three and you had two. So oh right, yeah, yeah. Five okay. and three. Mm -hmm. Then we went to the laugh. So your fingers are so skinny; they're like transparent. It's really the weird. light is. Shining Shining through them right now. You look Laugh like Factory. E <laughs> Laugh Factory. We had a, probably four each there. Uh, three, let's even say three. Let's be nice and say you're going three. too fast. I don't even eight. remember. That's six for me. Eight for you. Six for me. Yeah, because then we went to that bar. But I started at Caroline's and had a lot more before That's we did any of that. I know. I'm up to eight for you. Yeah. I'm up to six for me. But then we went to that bar. Dude, I'm fine. You guys are and a mess. <laughs> We had at least four more drinks at that other bar. This used to be, by the way, this used Jesus. to be me drinking beer like this, and now it's just vodka and shots. Dude, I'm. Can you see what I'm saying? Everybody follows the same same yeah. progression. Then yeah. then you move on to the hard stuff because yeah, I got this beer. That just going. freaked me out the a weird, little bit. I never thing, counted before. That is a lot. The weird thing for me mentally is I can talk about this over and over. I can talk about how much I'm drinking. Everybody freaks out, and in my head, I literally never think I have a drinking problem. Any, why do you think that is? I don't know. I don't know if I'm that good is it, at denial or what. But. Is it because you don't feel any physical ailments? <sighs> I guess. I don't know. But I do. I'm just completely like I go up this, my stairs in my apartment. I'm like winded when I get to the top of the stairs. Well, me too. Dude, he, he literally, he look, you look like you go to the gym. <laughs> no way. I haven't been in a gym. I, I went to the last time I went to the gym, I gave up and started reading a magazine until my girlfriend was done working out. <laughs> I can't work. I hate working out. I hate it. It's so boring, and I feel like I'm doing it wrong all the time. Jesus, this is like okay. A wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> We're the same. Here we guy. go. It's this. this. We just we just had a bet with how many push-ups Joe could do. Oh yeah. Yeah, and uh, and he literally he banged out. <laughs> he did four and then started yelling at us. <laughs> four. <laughs> he did four, started yelling at us, and then he goes, "All right, I can do this," and he got back down on the floor and he did the first one. And he counts. He goes one. <laughs> <laughs> Which made him start laughing, and he could only bang out That's two so more funny. before he started laughing. If we had a do you, do you think you think you can beat him? Oh yeah, if he can only do that, yeah, I can. No, do, I, I, I can wait, do well, what do you think? What he started laughing, huh? I can do more than that. I started laughing though. All right, here we go. What, what do you think? What do you want? Who do you do want to bet on? Seven, eight push-ups. <laughs> no, I, I can do like a uh, round well, twenty. Five. That's what I can do around twenty twenty-five too. I start doing the snake thing though. <laughs> okay. You Are guys, you guys got to go head to head right now. I just want to say, Joe's like, if we had a treehouse, he's like the guy knocking on the door. Like, All right, on, guys, we, we if, if, the if, they, if they're gonna put this up, man, we we got to give him some cash. When it, right. when it gets what a fucking round of drinks, <laughs> <laughs> a forty. Hey, come on, the winner gets something. Huh? What do you want? What do you want, Joe? I don't know. Make it worth our while here. I, well, what can I do? You guys are really alcohol driven. I'll, I'll yeah. buy I'll buy you guys a bottle of something. Really? Yeah. I was just gonna enjoy beating Joe. But that's cool. Okay. I don't know if you're going to beat me, dude. Go ahead. You guys, we no, go the same Joe, Joe, wait a second, Joe. Do you want to talk a whole bunch of shit about all the push-ups you did in high school? No. I'm not going to talk <laughs> shit. But okay, I, I'm just wondering. I don't like, think I know I'm going to go down that easy. Jeez. Come on, man. You always make Is it this... good like that. Yeah, that's safe. That, that, nothing. Sure? This is the Opie and Anthony show. I know. They, they, do, they do wonderful don't things in here. Don't go over there. There's stains over there. Yeah. Don't, don't, I wouldn't go over in the couch <laughs> area. All right, here we go. Joe dressed in his period blood red T-shirt. And Julian, all right, here we go. This is the big. Now, uh, this is. The... Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. I know Joe's awful. Okay, this is this is basically for people listening. This is sixty drinks a week versus eighty drinks a week push-ups. We're really gonna. I have the advantage of having shoulders. Okay, he just said he had the event. We really should have got some uh, wireless mics, but they'd probably collapse on him. All right. Here we go. And, and God damn it, I'm gonna laugh. No, no, you just don't. Joe, you gotta be focused, all right? Okay, three, two, <laughs> one, begin. Okay. I'll count Julian, you count him. Julian's flying. <laughs> Six for Julian. What's Joe got? Nine. Nine. Ten. ten. They're both a ten. Nobody's... Eleven. Twelve. <laughs> Thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most. Oh! Julian, quit! Oh! Julian, quit! Yeah. No, no, Joe no, DeRosa! No, Joe DeRosa! No. Joe DeRosa! I, I can't accept Joe's push-ups. Fuck that! I keep going! <laughs>
I can't. I just what, what Joe, Julian? I gotta say something. Julian looked like a. He looked Ju- like at least Julian, three quarters of a man doing push-ups. Joe, you Joe's, look like a broken accordion. Joe's push-ups I won. I won. are not. They're not push-ups. They are not push-ups. They are. I feel it all right here. That's because <laughs> you're. That's because you're a fucking mound of mud. <laughs> I, those were push-ups. <laughs> no, they Joe, were not. What does Danny do? <laughs> fucking the rock. Fine, I'll do push. You have your fucking ass in the air. You have your ass out in the air, and then you go, you you you, you bend your arms maybe three inches down, no, and then come back he's got up. His and hands. That's, that's your push up. That's, that's not a push up. He's got his hands pointed in like a bulldog. <laughs> what do you want from he me? He looks like the dragon in the Chinese New Year parade. <laughs> I'll if you I'll do push ups. Come if on, you want that me was to a fair win. Give me that. No, I, that no. was fair. I started oh, you know what? We fucked up. We should have had him do it one at a time. One at a time. Because I'm I'm laughing, no, hearing him grunt and moan while he's over there doing. All right, push-ups. you want to go? You want to go two out of three? Well, now we're gonna. But now we're gonna. Do it we're we're going to test stamina. Joe, right, you, right, Joe yeah. you won the first round. All right, who goes first? Let's <laughs> do a different exercise. I'll go. <laughs> huh? Well, I mean, it, in fairness to people listening, dude, this is radio. We really should be videotaping this. I think if I think if, if we actually filmed Joe doing jumping jacks, we would definitely have the number one show on the <laughs> yeah, Saturday Night Virus. All right, here we go. Uh <laughs> What are we doing? We're going to do more. You want to do what? You want to go first or me go first? You want to go okay. setups? You want to go setups? Huh? I don't want to do setups. That's great then. Why don't we do, do push ups? I just don't. All right. All Pick right, your fine. poison, gentlemen. I'll do, I'll, we'll do push ups and I'll go first. Okay. All right. Here we go. This is round two. Now we're testing stamina. Joe DeRose with a surprising win in round one. <laughs> all right, Julian. It's like a slinky. <laughs> okay, three. See, Julian's going all the way like five, six. He's banging those, them out. Those are real push-ups. Those are real push-ups. That's what a man looks like when he's doing push-ups, Joe. 10, 11. Push-ups? You're skipping push Okay. What are you up to? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that was 18. Yeah, it was. It was that was at least 18. Yeah, really we'll, we'll say 18. Alright. 18 real push-ups. Joe looks like in that, like, you know those bodies in like 28 look, days? Look, 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 it's my favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we gotta describe that. Basically, when Joe lowers himself down to the ground, he, his knees hit first, his toes, then his knees, then the top of his thighs, then his crotch, and there's a then there's a pause. He does the snake, but only half of it. He never yeah, comes yeah. back up. He just does the first half of it. All right, here we go, Joe. You got you got to be eighteen. You got to beat eighteen. And I there am. he goes. One. Look at that hump on his back. Oh, stop. <laughs> Like he's, he's barely getting right, right. Okay, he's right. right. That's right. That's not fair. We That's can't make him back. You were yeah, just watching fair. him do it. We're right, not. Right. It's not fair. We'll give. We'll give him. We'll give him three. But at least. But now he... I got to start again. No, my let's... fucking arms again. Hey, tired. sweetheart. Oh, you give me three. We'll give you three. All right, all right. Wait, hang on a second because I want to go and put my hand under his chest where he actually has to go to for it to actually count as a real push up. He didn't go all the way to the Jesus ground. Christ. Where you know what I want to see you do? Chest? I want to see Danny like preside over the special olympics and just be like he's, 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 he's not really running. You're not doing that right. I want he's not retarded. I want to see. <laughs> all right, Joe, come on, Joe. Joe, you're one half of this fucking show. You got to beat this guy. <laughs> he's got 3. Come on, man. There's 4. Oh five. my god. He's is... going to do it. 6. Seven. <laughs> Hey, Do don't laugh. So he goes nine. Come on, Joe. Determination. Eleven. Yeah, they're not real. Pictures. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. <laughs> Fifteen. It looks like an insect. <laughs> I'm trying to pitch it. Eighteen. The girl Nineteen. He did it. It looks like he's. Twenty. It looks like he's fucking a fat woman. Oh my god. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. I won. That's it. Oh uh, god. Did not win. I want to give a shout out to all the lovely ladies that put up with having that over them. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And then call him the next day. Joe has the beginning of like osteoporosis. (laughs) Joe, sit down, man. Sit down. I can't sit down. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, this is great. He's winded. Joe, tell us about your experience. It was, uh. Do you want some water? It got got tough out there. I, uh. I went blind for a second, but uh, yeah, I pulled through, focused. Oh, he just spit all over the place. You smoke cigarettes, right? You smoke cigarettes? Yeah, but not a ton. Do you smoke? <laughs> like, like 60 a week. <laughs> my downfall isn't going to be cigarettes. It's the salami with mayonnaise hoagies. I, I like my mayonnaise uh, as much night. as the next guy. Oh, I love mayonnaise. I quit, I quit in bed. I quit smoking two years ago. 
and I have way more stamina. If you can, if you can die oh, yeah. from vodka and mayonnaise, that is how I'm going to die. Let's see. I want to see Danny do push-ups, though, since what he's the, the fucking man. aficionado over here. I'll beat. How many did you do? No, I'm not asking you to beat it. I just want to see you do some push-ups. I'll do push real push-ups. Show, yeah, show him how a real push-up yeah, goes. Yeah, I'm just saying yeah. school us over here. Come on, Led Zepp. Let's see yeah, what you got. Let's, yeah, see, let's, kinda... let's see what the carnies got. Let's see what you got. <laughs> All right, would you want me to just start whenever? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Eh, that's all right. I don't. I can't tell if you're sticking your butt up in the air or you just have a really nice ass. No, I'm, I'm not really sure which one. <laughs> Danny looks like the are big rag. Yeah, he really does. <laughs> that bird, that more. bird nest hair. <laughs> yeah. you know, Danny looks like, like the like dead. raging bull. <laughs> Who's the next door neighbor on that '70s show? <laughs> Do you fuck my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the next door neighbor on that '70s show? All right, show? dude, you we got it. Right, we right, got right, it. You right, can right, do right. it. You, yeah, no, yeah. No, no, no. You're the you're the producer. All right, you did it. I just want to see if you can do it. Now, when I wait, imitate what Joe was doing. Yeah, that's what I want to do it too. I want to do. Danny, do for the for, uh, for, this is the worst thing ever to do on radio. Okay, here we go. Yes, <laughs> he's got his yes, ass yes. in the oh, air. See, like he was presenting for a gonna, fucking mandrel. Gonna... Oh no, I did not. One. Yeah, that's what you were doing, Joe. Oh no, I was not. You were. You were, Joe. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's it right that's there. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you're doing. Really? Am I yeah. ass up that high? Joe, you look like a praying and your, mantis. And your arms were bending like, like a little bit. Whatever. Well, how do you keep your... I don't know how to do it. Any, hey, uh, the point Joe, is, you, you the have, point is you have do that... you feel better? A little bit, yeah. All right, see? That's what you got to do. You got to work out. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe, I was like, how Joe tried to call me out, and I just showed up. Just... <laughs> no, I, I was just saying, you, you know, you got to show No, him he's through, right, he's all. right. You called him out, and he showed me how it really goes, and he showed you how it really went, Joe. He showed you 20 goddamn I times. shots in on his hair, that's all I care. That's fucking tight curl he's got. Does this show always just evolve into slamming Joe for the last hour? Yeah, basically. Yeah, it has. Can yeah. I come back? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Yeah, it's why am I always getting beat up on? Joe, it's, it's the same about... reason why when you go out to a bar and I go out to a bar, I sit there and babble stories and you have stage hands poking you in the face, Joe. Yeah. It's you. No, I'll, it's I'll tell you why. your face. No, no, I'll tell you. Joe, Joe gets shit on this show anyway because he always makes some weird claim that you have to make him back up. <laughs> I didn't make a claim today about push-ups. You asked me to do push-ups. I did them. All, no, all. No, all I'm saying is that, no, because then you start saying, oh, I could do 60 push-ups, and then you get you get called on it. And I did them. And you can't do them. No, you did. <laughs> Just like when you said, oh, I'm a great singer, I'm a great singer. You did and then we had, to, we, had to, we had to have you bring in your, your CDs. And all, oh, speaking and all, of that, we, 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 we got to play that oh, later wait on. Wait a second. I've wait never, a second. I've never heard second. him rap. Can I hear that? No, no, wait a second. No, we, we, we have a clip coming wait up. Wait a second. Uh, okay. Somebody put together. In fairness, don't don't discredit that the way I got shit for discrediting the drum battle and claiming that I won it. If I'm getting shit for that, then and I take the shit for that, and I shouldn't have said that, but in all fairness, at least half or more than half of the listeners that called him about those cities said, I don't really like the music or I do like it, but he can sing. A lot of fucking people said that. Yeah, but Joe, 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 this, thing, Joe, 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 this is what oh, happened. Oh, you're lying. <laughs> you're fucking Dude, lying you're, right you're, First of all, your own friend came in and said... And then you know what he said to me after? I was fucking around, dude. I hope those guys realize that. Oh, really? That. Is that what he said off air so we well, can't well, defend well. it? <laughs> what do you want from Joe, me? Joe, first of all, stop yelling. That's what I want. Now, let me tell Joe, this, this is what you said actually on break today. I know. You said you made the mistake of... I, Joe, if I, you just said... I live I, up to that. I'm, it, not, I'm not saying I, I didn't... Just, you just can't get a word in with this guy. No, I'm If you just said, it. you know, if you put a, a band in a bar, I could, I could get the job done. If you said that, dude, I, I wouldn't have argued with you. But you, you bring yourself off like you're Celine Dion. Here's, you're up there thump, thumping that, your chest. No one, said no one this one is said, the first time you have, though. No well, one, on air, I'm sorry. No one said you right. couldn't sing. But I do recall Joe's quote being that he could sing in like a Broadway show. That I was like a direct that. quote. I shouldn't have said that. What I'm saying, but that's why if you take shit, that's why you're taking it. Yeah, and then, then yeah, but today I'm taking <laughs> shit for doing something you guys told me to do. I don't understand. Like, well, I guess then like, we're just I making fun of your bad form. I didn't go, oh, I can fucking do this. You guys go, I want to see you do push-ups. And I said, First I... First of all, Joe, it's a comedy show. <laughs> you're in terrible shape, and you're doing push-ups. It's funny. <laughs> we're on the radio. They can't see what you look like, so we have to describe that yeah, you look like a no, wounded and, and it's fucking just... insect. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that I was trying to call you out on your push-ups. It's that you were doing you were doing these these weird, like, like right, third push-ups, but, and that's but, what I was calling you out. Can you understand how I don't want every episode to... <laughs> devolve into me getting shit from you guys because then I go on the road and people from the show come out to the show and they're going to think that they can just give me shit. Has that happened? Has that happened? 
No. <laughs> First of all, Joe, exactly. Wait, my, Stop, by the way. And, if, and not to mention, Joe, if you get a ton of people showing up, you're going to make a ton of money, and you're going to be a happy guy. Yeah. You're going to be a happier drunk like me, Joe. You'll be doing no, those. I don't, want to be, I, I don't want him to show up for that reason, though. You'll you be doing those retarded push-ups in you, Sacramento. They, they love the you, Joe. They, they, <laughs> people on the show, they love you, Joe, okay? Yeah. We're just breaking your fucking balls. Right, I'm know? not getting too sensitive here. I'm just, I'm just You can't win with this fucking guy. Jesus Christ. Just ask like, a fucking question. He's like punching the blob. You're like, I can't tell if I'm hurting it. Cause yeah. I was just fucking... asking a question. Stop playing with your belt and just sit down. <laughs> I don't want to sit. My arms hurt. <laughs> <laughs> he won't be able to get back up again. He used all his getting up energy. He makes comments like that, and then he wonders why he, get, he gets made fun of. He, he's so sick. So, uh, the other night at the cellar, Keith Robinson had to hug him after because no, he Keith hug Robinson, me. he did hug you. He didn't hug me. He hugged you. He made me hug him. He didn't He didn't hug me like, come here and give me a hug and I love you. He made me fucking hug okay, him. Okay, just he for our up. listeners who aren't comedians who hang out at the Comedy Cellar, Keith Robinson is... Uh, one of the meanest guys you'll ever meet, <laughs> and he, well, uh, yeah, he trashes people at his club, kills the comedy me. cellar. Don't, don't, but here's what kills me: is you motherfuckers all put wow. the shit in somebody's Whoa. head. Hey, hey, Ooh, hey, oh, hey. okay, you, Easy. you all put the shit in somebody's head about save it for the push-up ring. Here's <laughs> here's where you don't. This is where you don't make fun of people, and this is where you draw a line. And then, and ever that's what everybody did to me down at the cellar. Everybody said, okay, well. Once you pass to the cellar, your first couple shows are crucial. You have to do really well. Uh -huh. And I was like, all right, cool. And then and then everybody else also said, the whole staff determines your longevity in that club. They're going to report it's that. It's not like that anymore, though. All right, well, see, but none of you said that. All anybody said to me was, the staff has to like you, and and you have to do well in the beginning. Right. So my second set in there, where I was doing well, Marina comes downstairs and starts fucking with me while I'm on stage, which wasn't cool. Then I come upstairs, and you and Keith and Kurt are telling all everybody and making a loud Joe, scene. I, I know why this happens to you. Why? It's your reaction is so much fun because well, you snap. So, you're so, but, right how, now, but let a listen to me. Set up an execution of us making you feel scared. That's and fine. But let I me, think it's great. Let me ask a question. I mean, though. that happens to but everybody, me, Joe, who goes fine. down to the cellar. You're like the guy that. who pledges a frat and is pissed because he has to go through hell week. No, 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 no. Come on, dude. Let me ask you a question. How is it supposed to make me feel better and I swear to God, I'm not being like sensitive. Can you sit or down right so I don't feel I, I like I honestly don't want to? I want you're to like some right disgruntled town member. <clears throat> but but I swear to God, I'm I not... don't know why they don't have a sidewalk on Maple Street. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm not being like sensitive and upset right now. I'm just I'm just discussing the Mr. point. Mr. Johnson's dog. How... Well, shut up. How do you expect it to make? How do you expect me to feel when you tell me the reason that? people fuck with you is because when they see it upsets you and gets in your head it's funny to them and they want to do it more okay i can answer i can answer that i can answer that i can answer it joe i can answer it because that truth is the truth for everybody did you never go to elementary school yeah, and I got made fun of through the whole fucking thing. And you thing. didn't learn anything Yeah, from it. and Joe, all you have to <laughs> yeah, do no, I don't like getting is made fun if, of. <laughs> yeah, what you do is... <laughs> <laughs> That's... <laughs> the fuck? Look, dude, it's a cellar. The cellar's a cellar. Uh, Keith I can't wait to tell everybody at the cellar that Keith, Joe said, I don't like being made fun of. Keith said to me after, he's like, dude, you fuck with people too, and he's right, I do. And, and did you hear what he just said? Huh. He goes, I can't wait go, to go to the cellar <laughs> to tell him that. Now, why do you think he's doing that? Not only because it's fun, but it keeps it <laughs> off of him. That's the game. Yeah. It comes at you, which you get, it's like it's hot called potato. Tag. It's called Yeah, tag. you, you got to get it off You're you. You're it. I'm a you <laughs> get upset, you take it seriously, you let in a 62-year-old black man fucking jackass... Him. Had to hug Trash him. you. No, no, he didn't and, have to hug me. He made me fucking hug him because he knew I was mad at him. It wasn't like oh, I was... Right. You know what, Joe, right, Joe, right, Joe, right, Joe right. we, we, have to, we have to take a break. You know what? You right, are who break, you are. Every, yeah. Everybody loves you, Joe. Everybody loves it's you. It's okay. I don't it's need okay. this shit. I, I know you that. You can't fucking win you, with you this guy. Yeah. All stop. right, that's it. Shut up. You're listening to Uninformed. Bill Burr, Joe DeRosa. It's Uninformed with Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. All right, we're back uninformed with Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. Dude, that's, that's the ACDC song I was telling you about. Spellbound. Spellbound. You got to listen to it, man. It was almost like a fork in the road. I think they should have gone down that one. I, I, uh, I haven't heard this song in a long time. It's so a great remember. song. It's not about balls or titties. <laughs> it's actually about depression. What are, what are I can't do nothing right. You got to hear it. 
All right, we'll let it play. Let me hear I'm it. not going to play like the whole damn thing. Let me just hear a little. <laughs> you don't remember this one? No. The whiplash. I think they thought this part here was too depressing for their listeners. All right, good. Bring it down. Bring it. Last song, uh, second side, I think. He's probably going to start singing about his balls in the next verse, right? No, he doesn't. That's the thing. It, <laughs> I'll listen to it at home. It is. It's about sort of like feeling. All their songs are party songs. It's like feeling up, going like to so, hell. Sometimes, sometimes my balls don't feel right in the morning. Anybody else get that? He, uh, I like the change that happened in Brian Johnson's voice, though. I'm not. Uh, I'm a big fan of that guy, but I'm not as. I'm not as much of a fan of the early. ACDC Brian Johnson stuff is I like his uh, voice. You know whose no, voice no, 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 I love? No, I don't mean the music. Joe DeRosa's. I love the songs. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. I love the songs. I mean, they're great, but uh, I just mean like the way his voice sounds like a little bit later. Like, right, I guess probably it's right around like Thunderstruck or Heat Seeker or whatever. Like, his voice just sounds a little, it's a little less screechy and a little. Ah, oh, no, man. I, I you like that. Really, you guys are really pandering like to your female audience right now. Huh? We don't have a female audience. <laughs> No, we don't. Really? We, have, we, have, we have like a bunch of truckers. I was pretty sure I was being sarcastic. You know, Julian is really making me want to just dump some hot coffee on him. <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah, he really is just, really? He's just, he's just, just, he's just being a little fuck. cunty. I don't give well, a fuck. Well, well, well. <laughs> hey, you just had, you had a joke coming into break that completely bombed. It got nothing. Why didn't we jump on him? What the because fuck did he just say? You're too he's... busy jumping on me, you fucking twat. Turn it on somebody else for 10 minutes. Joe, this... you, you got a mouth? Get this it off a, you. You know what I'm saying? Let's Joe, go. Joe, Maybe it's because the joke you, was you got brilliant. A, you got a mouth, Joe. <laughs> I am not I'm good to, at I'm, it. I'm, I'm supposed to fight your battle, too? <laughs> no, but I'm saying I'm not good at it. All right, yeah. This is I don't like how he just told Danny to cue the fucking song a, that we're playing. Jokingly. Oh, he, he's, yeah, he's a jackass. He's an idiot. You're the one who booked him. I'm a douche. I booked him. <laughs> See what he does? Now he agrees, and it gets it off him. Yeah. Did you learn something, Joe? All right. It's called a keto. You use but the a, other guy's force <laughs> against him. I'm a douche and, that can do 20 real push-ups, though. Nah. <laughs> I, I want the shirt off before he leaves here. I'm I want not to taking see the shirt a, off. I want to see what's under. The, that's also the difference between him and me. He draws a line, and I don't ever <laughs> draw a line. Do you know what I know? Julian has, is actually uh, phony, uh, sexy. Like he's actually looks like a like he's a uh, he's a uh, you know he's one of those ten things that uh, whatever those fucking teen movies. He looks like one of those guys, and he and he really isn't. He's just all mushy. No, I'm I'm gross, and I don't yeah. have a chin. I know. See how he does well, that? That's fucking brilliant. Yeah, I have a second chain and no first chain. He doesn't chain. try That's to defend bullshit. himself. It, but, he just agrees with it, and it's fucking you know over. What? And you I know got, what? My teeth are you worth, the, worse All than I jewels. did for the middle or for the first hour of the show was trash myself and trash my body and then do push-ups on your fucking request. And I was a sport about it, and I did, and I laughed at myself. And you still trash me for it. So fuck off. Dude, we it's were, not we were a matter also, of turning we were, it on yourself. <laughs> You're see, fucking but then, lying. But you see what it is? He's still getting He's still upset. Getting angry. Which He's makes doing... it funny. All uh, right, good. It's funny. It's a big <laughs> fucking laugh. <laughs> you just can't help him. You can't fucking... Uh, I don't impossible. want your help. I don't want your help! Uh, all right, Jesus what are we doing Christ. here? Oh, good. Here's something our listeners. Like Here's a listener sent this in. I'll go and I'll sing. <laughs> 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 I know, I just, I, look, I'll tell you what. I'll take you on again. I think I have good pitch, and I think I'm good enough that if I, in proper rehearsal, I could do a musical or something. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit. I could sing that fucking song. It's not that hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, God, bring it down, bring it down. That was the hardest I've laughed in See, Joe, weeks. I mean, that's funny. This shit's oh, funny. funny. Like, dude, I'm not break. Dude, if I thought you sucked or I thought you really stunk, I wouldn't be doing a show with you, okay? I know. Just stop. All right. I'm so sick of having to fucking appease your feelings after every that show, dude. I, I really so have to tell happy. you that, Joe. You got you to toughen up a little bit. That was funnier well, than dude, Cartman. But here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. You know, I, I know you're sick of it, but here's the thing. It's like, if we're, if we're friends... And I and it's just like you see that I'm getting into the like all right dude back off mode 
then then back off of me. I can a never tell when you're on the show. First of all, you're 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 acting like dude. It wasn't the whole show, man. The whole show wasn't that. We had some great talks about alcoholism. There was big. 45 minute fucking chunks before anybody just made fun of you for fucking two minutes Dude, and, and you make it sound like it's this the is, entire no, show. This is what set me because it be, no, because this is what set me <laughs> off is when Julian, who's never even heard the show before, who's our guest, says, Does this happen every week? Do we get to trash Joe for the last ever, er, hour of every week? And you know what? He's right. This does happen but every week. No, but he was joking, week. though. No, I'm not saying he, he was, was making a, dick a joke for saying that, but he's right, though. That's what happens every week. At the end, it, it dissolves into you guys trashing me about something. You I know Danny, that it Danny, does. I Wait, Danny, 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 Danny I thought, was the one Danny, that agreed with it. I, but I thought Danny took some lumps. I thought Danny I'd took some lumps. Everybody takes lumps. Yeah, he took some lumps. I took I just, a couple. I just, I, I've, been working a couple for the, I've been working for ONA for three years. If you don't know how to take lumps, you know, you're in the wrong business. Yeah. yeah. Can, I, can I just say I like Joe's I, voice later in the uh, career? Uh, I like what he started doing later. I, I mean, but this bah, is what kills bah, me is bah. when <laughs> it's what, what, what makes me, I'm not disagreeing with the way you conduct. Whatever. Joe, you know what? This is just like Britney Spears. I don't give a fuck at this point. Let's, let's just we'll move yeah, on to really. the next topic, okay? Well, no. We'll, we'll, try, we'll try not to trash you. Don't. No, and we'll just, saying, we will hold, just hold, move on. Now, no, the next topic we wanted no, to discuss Bill, don't be an was asshole. you porn versus... Don't be an asshole. You, you brought something up. I'm retorting to it because you don't like the way that I'm retorting to it. Don't get upset. I'm not no, saying... No, we're, we're, listeners Joe, Joe. were enjoying us slam you, and now you're we're, torturing Julian, them. will you stop acting like you're on the show every week? Seriously, <laughs> shut the All fuck I'm up. All I'm saying is, you know I'm sensitive, so let me be sensitive. Don't give me shit for being sensitive. Dude, first of all, I'm your glasses are fogging up, all right? Don't all get right, emotional but, you know, on I'm me, all right? Joe, saying... this is going in a circle. I know your point. You know my point. We don't agree. Let's fucking move on. I don't think you know my point. I don't... I, I, I there's just no fucking... There's no winning with this guy. You know what? For half a second, Danny, I thought that hat was made out of leather. Just the way it was shining, and I was going to make fun of you. Would you, would, I... would you get it sensitive, and then I'd have to apologize to you I for probably, fucking four I probably hours? wouldn't wear a leather hat to this program. <laughs> 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 All right, you're right. You're right, because making fun of somebody's hat is the same thing as making fun of their persona and their character and their emotions and all that. It's the same fucking thing. You're right. Oh, Jesus. You That's know what? Do difference. you have a copy of that Christina Aguilera when she sings that, I am beautiful? <laughs> All right. All right. Move I on. I am beautiful no matter <laughs> Move what on. You're they right. say. You're right because, you know, everybody should just. Let's get me down. <laughs> do, you, do you see what you're doing <laughs> I love that, dude. I really like that. I like it, Joe. It's fucking funny and it's cool. It's fine, Joe. It's, it's, it's fine. It's what, fine. What? I didn't say it wasn't, but stop fucking talking over me and fucking making fun of me right now. It's bugging me, dude. <laughs> it was fine. Ten minutes ago, it was fine. But what I don't like is when I say, well, I'm What do you want me to do here, Joe? I tried to tap out three times. Like, fine, forget it. We don't... We, when, we, I, we... when I secede and say, yeah, I'm, I'm fucking <laughs> sensitive, and then you're giving me shit like, I need to toughen up. I don't need to toughen up. Maybe you need to soften up a little bit. Maybe oh. that's the difference. Mm. Did you ever think of it that way? No, because nobody does. Everybody thinks you got to act the way they want you to fucking act, and it's annoying, dude. How does it make you feel? <laughs> All right, whatever. Let's move on. You porn versus uh, whatever. Let's go. Let's go. Let's keep it on a fucking I dumb talk guy that. level in here. And, I want to you know, talk about that. What? You porn. Let's talk All right, about it. Here we it. go. Joe, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, a, I don't know. All right, know. now you're keeping it going. I'm just, Julian, I swear <laughs> to God, you've never been more fucking annoying than you are right now. All right. Uh, what do we, we want to talk about, uh. Actually, we, we were hanging out, me and Joe. We were getting along. No one was getting made fun of, you know, so the conversation was nice and smooth. Um, I was telling – some girl actually was telling me, you, you got to go to U-Porn, okay? And I go on the road, and when I'm not fucking drinking, um, I'm jerking off to hotel porn. <laughs> there's, a, there's a sound bite for the show. And, you know, you're blowing like – it's really like fourteen ninety nine. It's a ton of money. So yeah, it's ridiculous. It, it's, why, why would you even bother with uh, the hotel because porn? Because I'm lonely, Danny. You could, yeah, but you know, you could just Google image vagina and have a pretty good time jerking off to just that. Like a still picture of a vagina? <laughs> a dry, sure. Really? A dry. Do you stand outside butcher shops and just <laughs> rub one out to some pork chops? I'm saying you don't have to waste $40 on, on, on awful hotel porno. There's plenty hey, of... Hey, look, Danny, what I do with my money... Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I know exactly what you mean. Whatever. I would rent, like, you know, one or two, and, they, they're, so always, bad, and they're always awful. They're always awful, and... Uh, I don't know. And then, okay, so anyway, so this girl actually told me, she was telling me about, like, she goes, why don't you just go to youporn, youporn.com, and I'm sitting there, I went there, it's all this free porn, and I think they're great. I don't think they're that bad. And Joe, who is like a, a you know, like a connoisseur of porn, <laughs> just started, he started trashing. He said, he actually, Joe prefers a pay site. 
Yes. To, I, you, to you porn. Yes. Like, well, first of all, Danny, have you, have you been to uh, you porn Absolutely. yet? Absolutely. Okay. I love you porn. And porno tube. Don't Julian, forget porno tube. I, 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 I have no problem with you porn. I think you porn is a good site. Joe? Mm-hmm. They both suck. They're they terrible. do both suck. They're worthless. I'll agree. What, what both and suck? I, porno tube porno and, tube and, and you porn. And I'll agree with Joe that pay sites are indeed better. Are because, they? I've yes. never done it. Because well, you get what you pay for. You exactly. Know? And and uh, th- those kind of like YouTube style porno sites, it's they're very straight and generic porno. And a pay site mm-hmm. is going to have more more porno catered to what you're looking for in your jerking off experience. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, but I, I just don't want to have like some revolving charge on my, you know, you know, titties dot com. <laughs> Plus, I don't trust those things. Like, I don't want to give a credit card number to a porn site. Well, I Am mean, I crazy? dude, you're not, you're not, I mean, score VOD. I mean, they're a legitimate magazine. It's not like they're going to. Why don't you what, plug, plug the site that you're in? What, Scorevod.com. Which is what? How'd you find it? What do you mean? Which is what? I'm saying, what, 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 what is it that makes it special? I mean, they got like, I mean, they have basically they have like over on... 10,000 movies on it. It's a database. It's fucking incredible. I mean, they, you know. Well, on porn, they yeah. have like Excuse me. every size, shape, race, chick. They don't, though. They don't. they don't. I've searched. Well, if you've spent the time I have on the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm telling you. I've Every s- time I've gone on a search, it's always popped up with at least 10 videos. I've searched you porn for things that I've searched on Score VOD, and you can't find it. I mean, Score Absolutely. VOD has much more specific fetish-related stuff on it. Okay, so what, what, what are you into? I'm a big fan of older women with younger women. I like that quite a bit. You know, okay. like milk. That's like the jam band of porno. <laughs> you're, really, you're, you're really getting into like a specific... The, the string cheese incident. <laughs> you got no... You got no older women with younger women. There's very limited MILF porn on you porn. Trannies, forget it. There's nothing. <laughs> uh, you what can't... Have I been you know, POV, wrong? you go into score VOD, you say, I want to I want to watch a girl blow me or I want to watch nah, a girl give me stuff. a hand job. You know, it's... That's... that. They have everything. They can uh, actresses. You can't search on you porn by actress su- efficiently. I mean, they they've got some that'll come up, but I mean, if you really want to see, there was a service. You know, uh, yeah, but dude, it's 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 free. Because my whole thing is, yeah, I, I, well, so I, is, I, you know, I, so I are don't the fucking mints at the bank. But, but you're not going to eat lunch. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't want to. You know what it is with me? Like there was a line where I drew in uh, the porno sand, where it's just like I don't want to. I don't want right. to lose any more of my soul. I don't want to keep going down that that that. I think that's dark good. Hole. I, I think it's. I honestly think it's good that you only uh, watch you porn. I mean, but but I'm saying if you're if you're if you're arguing it from a uh, you know a fuck I don't know an ethical or moral standpoint. Yes, I think you're much better off only looking at you porn. But if you're looking at it from a porn aficionado standpoint, like you accept- it can't. Hold the fucking Dude, they, 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 they got one on there because it's like real. They got this girl getting banged at work. She's got nothing on but like this, this stupid green sweater. And this guy's got a bent over like this credenza. <clears throat> and you can they're like whispering. Like, <laughs> it's, one of the, it's like one of the hottest things I've ever yeah. seen. That's what I love about you porn. It's, it's all people sending shit. I mean, there's real porn on it too, but it's all people sending shit in. Like guys banging their girlfriends and, and stuff. And, and, and anytime, I think that's awesome. And anytime I sense any sort of professional quality to it, I, I get rid of Like I don't like like... Professional porn, when I always had, like, they always had, like, a theme, you know, and then just immediately everybody was completely naked and just went out the window. Like, it'd be like, oh, hot nurses. Oh, they're going to be all hot nurses. They come in, they dress like hot nurses, you know, and then just immediately they're just completely naked, yeah. the same fucking and, red leather couch. And professional porn poses are all the same. It's always, like, the, the eight positions that they always do, and it's always, like, perfectly choreographed. I think that's boring. I like watching real... Yeah, the mm-hmm. ridiculous over the top. Oh yeah. God, <laughs> moaning. I hate that. Well, there's a there's a service. Uh, I believe it's called XTV. Laszlo turned me on to this. It's a it's a set top box that you plug into your router and you hook up to your TV, and it's like 200 channels of just streaming porno. <laughs> it's probably one of the most co- the, one of the most awesome things that I've I've ever what even is, experienced. It's unreal. That guy's a- married too, right? Yeah, well, that's why he gave it to me because I guess he didn't want to. Yeah, because I was like, <laughs> I, 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 I could never go down. I could never become Dude, that guy no, with the station that's wagon. The thing, if you see that in somebody's house, leave. Uh, well, the, you know <laughs> yeah, the best. That guy's the best. Crazy. The best thing about this, it, the, the remote control that it came with, actually had a panic button 
on it. So, <laughs> so that, like, I guess if your wife or your kid came into the room, you could just hit this button. It would just immediately go to a black screen. Yeah. yeah I mean, you're still sitting there with your cock out in your hand, but at least there's no <laughs> porn do they, on. do they have the panic room that you can run into? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the cool thing is, is that it had, I mean, if you were into straight porno, they had all these straight porno channels that you could be into. Or if you're more like me and Joe and you wanted something a little more, you know, off the, you know, off the beaten trail, so to speak, they had that. They, they had a, they had I was a fucking, trying to wonder what, what euphemism they, you were going to use there. They had, you want dude, something a little more spicy? to it <laughs> bro they had a, a little channel. more razzmatazz there was, there was a porno channel that was strictly dedicated to uh chicks that shave their heads bald <laughs> are you and, serious yeah there you could jerk off to bald chick porno <laughs> there was, was, it, was wow. it were they full movies or was it just full scenes? no full movies and like there was like a tv guide channel you know like that was like the main menu what and you flip through it was called xtv by the how much does it cost? Thing- it's exp- it was kind of expensive. Well, the, the I had a comp box, but uh, I think it's it's like forty bucks a month. Or whatever. What do you mean? Someone Every- gave it to you for free? Yeah, like I, Laszlo went to some convention and he got like a, a a comp box where it was just free of charge. Like what? Like that? That I always want to go to that Vegas porn. Yeah, I think that's what it was from actually. Do you uh, still not- have it? Yeah, but the uh, the the subscription isn't there anymore. So the service. Doesn't exist anymore. No, no, it's or? there. I have to pay if I want it now. I have to pay for. It. I was getting it for free because it was a comp. Oh, I bet I that's the one time a year that all the hotels in Vegas actually change the top bed spread. Is like the, <laughs> the week after, like the, the porno convention is in yeah, there. It, 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 it convenes with uh, the CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, and I think that's where this act, this box actually came from. Like wow. Oh, like the show. nerd show where they have yeah, all the new yeah, gadgets? Yeah. Every, every guy that owns that box looks like the comic book guy from The Simpsons. <laughs> Probably, but it, you know what? It's one of the fucking coolest things. Yeah. Yeah. It really was. Like, if you're heavy, it's, like, I have so many pornos. I can't even, I couldn't even, I, I, I can't count them. I probably have hundreds and hundreds of porno, of, of porno DVDs. We, I don't think I have any left anymore. I don't have any. I just got rid of all of them. Like, the last one I had was Why are they, like, $40? This. I don't know. Jesus yeah. Christ, because you're buying the commemorative... No, it's like, <laughs> yeah, you don't have to get the collector's edition yeah. no, every like, time it comes out. <laughs> the the pull-out poster. Thing, re-releasing it. it comes with KY. <laughs> with with the new director's, extras. The director's cut. I got, um... No, but, like, if you get, like, a Vivid, it's, like, 40 bucks. Well, it's quality. V- Vivid's a good company. I mean, you can get more of the shit porno. Yeah. It won't cost you that much. Oh, that's right. I just haven't been in a store in a long yeah, fucking time. Yeah, you go time. to one of these DVD, DVD stores... That's what's funny about Manhattan, by the way. All the regular DVD stores have, like, walls of porn. I love that. Yeah, check out Evil Empire is probably one of the best porno companies. Really? That's out there right now. <clears throat> that's a great name. Mm. I don't know, man. Why? What? You porn it. You porn You get the real no, people. I'm with you, no, Bill. And plus, no. I, the main thing that he got into that I'm into is the, the level, the lack of commitment to it. It's like, you just go, it's free, you pick one movie, and you jerk off, it's over. You know what I mean? Not yeah, like, and you're, you're done. I don't want to be reading off my expiration date. Pornhub's not bad. <laughs> Pornhub's a free one. That's one that's not bad. I think Red Tube is also another you porn hacked, style. Though. Red Tube. It got hacked. <laughs> Red Tube, yeah. Yeah, it's like hacked. Like you, you go to it and it's like a hacker page now. But porn, Pornhub is good, I think. For Do you a free guys read? One. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, I read before bed. Yeah. You know, it was a pretty yeah. interesting one that, that it's not there anymore, but it was called Beast Tube. I guess you guys could figure that one out. Ew. <laughs> Why? What, people having sex with yeah. with animals? Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> wow. That's really funny. Beast Tube? <laughs> <It's> not- <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got to hear about it now. It got taken down. What, but what it was, was the it was most bizarre animal? Uh, man has sex with dolphin. What? <laughs> what, he put it in his blowhole? No, I think the dolphin fucked him, right? Oh, uh, man. Dolphins I, have huge cocks. I, <laughs> to be perfect, I don't, I don't remember. But How I just remember. not remember I don't remember. That? Because the title was so funny, it, it kind of outshone the video. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when someone sends you a link to, to uh, a website called BeastTube, and, and the yeah, subject I, of the I don't, email I don't watch says, any of that stuff. <laughs> It's funny. No, that shit's disgusting. I can't do uh... well, well, I'm not the, saying it's not disgusting, it, but it's funny as shit. It I can't. No, it like animal. freaks me out where I can't even. I can't watch it. I That's where Joe finally draws out. the line, huh? Yeah, I, can't, I, I saw a pig fucking a woman once. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Did funny really? as shit, right? No, it, it freaked me out. I had to leave the room. Who does that? It really, really upset me. Why don't you just shut it off? Because there was a group of people watching oh. it, so I just had to walk Because there was the a pig room. fucking a woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, that was bad. Yeah, you're going to walk out early on that? That was bad. Mm. What, do you got, what do you got for time? We should probably start wrapping up. Start wrapping up? Yeah. All right. All right, man. Well, that does it for another uh, episode of uh, Uninformed. Julian, thanks for coming in and being a guest. Do you have anything that uh, you want to hype you got coming <laughs> uh, up? I'm going to Shippensburg University on uh, the 15th, so if you're in the Shippensburg area. Where is that? <laughs> I have no idea. It's in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Oh, all right. I've never even heard of it. Shippensburg. Yeah. DeRosa, what do you got? Um, I'm actually with... Uh, Oh, God, I'm at uh, 
Stand up New York, the 22nd and 23rd, and then I'm in Sacramento with you. Uh, I'm headlining the first two nights, the 27th and 28th, and then I'm with you for the 29th. 29th through March uh, March 1st. Me and Joe DeRose are yeah. going to be at the Punchline in Sacramento. And the week before, I'm going to be at the Tempe Improv, February 21st through the 24th. Uh, that's it. And that's it. Thanks again. We'll be uh, back again for another episode of uh, Uninformed in March. Thanks for listening. This concludes Saturday Night Virus. Bill Burr, DeRosa, Merry Christmas, buddy. Happy New Year. I hope that it is a wonderful holiday for you, and I hope the success you have achieved over the last few years continues on for many, many more, because you are a wonderful person, and you deserve the great successes that you've found in your life. That, Bill, is what a Christmas message should sound like. It shouldn't be full of little quips and insults about me roasting chestnuts and how you want to punch me in the face. All right, well, that sucked. To hear the Opie and Anthony Show five days a week, live on satellite radio, online on your phone or tablet, or even on demand, go to SiriusXM.com. Also, interact with the Opie and Anthony Show on Twitter, at Opie Radio, at Anthony Cumia, and at Jim Norton.